treat for you tonight. I was refereeing a basketball game last week at Dunmore Elementary and a student, young student came up and sang the Star Spangled Banner and I said I got to bring her to a borough meeting. I want to introduce to you Jade Glad. Hey.
by singing a beautiful rendition of our national anthem. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and council of the borough of Belmar take great pride and wish Jay Glad the best of luck in the future with her beautiful singing voice, her talent for playing musical instruments, and we do hope that Jay will again honor Belmar with the singing of the national anthem at future events. event coming down in the future, like where the governor might be there, or maybe, <laughs> maybe something leading up to Memorial Day weekend. On the boardwalk. Okay, keep that date open for your uh, governor. Okay? We'll contact we'll your manager. Right? Yeah. Good <laughs> Okay, uh, the next student that I want to recognize, Eric Hossian. Eric, come on up. Yeah, only in eighth grade. Can you imagine his parents trying to keep this refrigerator filled with food the next couple of years? Eric is a wrestler, obviously. Uh, but Eric started his wrestling career in the Belmar Recreation Basketball League. That's a joke, Eric. I wasn't sure if Eric wanted the two points for a, a jump shot or the two points for the takedown in the basketball game. And if there was a loose ball on the floor, I wasn't sure if Eric was going to go for the loose ball or pin the opponent. <laughs> Honoring Eric Kossian. Whereas Eric Kossian is an eighth grade student at Belmar Elementary School, and whereas Eric is the son of Chris and Donna Kossian from 9000 in Belmar. Whereas Eric is a distinct, distinguished wrestler for the Belmar Elementary School wrestling team under the auspices of wrestling coach Mike DeRouge, also from Belmar. <laughs> Whereas Eric successfully completed his wrestling season with 21 wins, no losses. <laughs> including 14 pins. In the 185 pound weight class. <laughs> Don't get me out of here. Whereas Eric won three major tournaments this year the Monmouth County, the Monmouth Middlesex County, and the Tri County Monmouth Middlesex and Ocean County Wrestling Tournaments, tournaments with an unblemished record of six wins and no losses. Now, therefore, be resolved that the Mayor and Council of the Borough of Belmar. Proudly wish Eric good luck in high school, where he will be wrestling for Mass One? Yes. Mass One in high school. For the next four years, and may Eric continue his success in the many wrestling tournaments in his future and his future wrestling career for the college of his choice. Yeah. Can, I, can I say some words? I'm gonna say no to him. <laughs> I would like to thank the council and the best coach ever, Mike Durge. Now we have a third person, um, Devin Barry. Devin, come on up. Devin. I'm going to read the proclamation first, and then Devin's going to show you why we're giving him this proclamation, which is why. This is up on the uh, screen. Whereas Devin Barry is a 13-year-old seventh grade student at Belmar Elementary School, and whereas Devin, the son of William and Karen Barry, is a resident of 10th Avenue of Belmar. Whereas Devin's video titled, Belmar, Restore the Shore, was the winning video from over 50 videos submitted from throughout the county in the People to People Student Ambassador Program. Whereas Devin's video highlighted our town of Belmar and its recovery from Superstorm Sandy. Whereas Devin, now recognized as a hometown student ambassador, will travel this summer on a European heritage trip, which will take Devin to seven European countries from July 14th to August 2nd, with other student ambassadors from throughout the United States. Whereas David, Devin received $1,000 for this winning video and has raised an additional 
$3,500 on his own through fundraising and is still working hard to raise an additional $3,000 to pay for the entire cost of the trip. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and council of the borough of Belmar are proud to congratulate Devin for his winning video and look forward to sending Devin as our ambassador of Belmar to Europe <coughs> this summer to promote our town of Belmar. Good job, Devin. Now, I would now turn around and start this, but I'm not going to mess this up. <laughs> And this will be interesting to see how a 13-year-old from Belmar saw the storm. Uh, yes, Devin, one more over here. So this we... is the ocean, the heart of Belmar. And as a girl, Hurricane Sandy came on Monday afternoon, October 29th, and swept most of Belmar away. In the meantime, we all have to sit and believe that someday, our town will once again be put back together. The day after the storm, everyone in Belmar went up to Ocean Ave and looked at the destruction the storm had caused to our town. The boardwalk had swept away. People were being taken out by boats. Stores were destroyed. Playgrounds were found blocks in. And homes were underwater. Everyone walked the next day on the boardwalk in depression and confusion. Everything was gone. The stores that I used to shop at, the playgrounds that I used to play on. The only buildings left standing were the Belmont Fishing Club and the pier. The whole town was wondering how Belmont would ever manage to restore the shore. As the days followed, we saw the cranes come and destroy all of our deepest memories of Belmar. The buildings got torn down and debris filled the streets, and they tried to pick it up as fast as possible. Whatever could be saved was salvaged. The lanterns were piled up to return to the future boardwalk, but it was sad to see Belmar blocked off. <coughs> and on Monday afternoon, October 29th, and swept most of them away. In the meantime, we all have to just sit and believe that someday our town will once again be put back together. The day after the storm, everyone in Belmar went up to Ocean Ave, and the, the whole town was wondering how Belmar would ever manage to restore the shore. and school reopened two weeks later and everything seemed normal. In early December, there was a Christmas tree lighting at Piano Plaza. Every summer on Friday nights, there are concerts. A lot of local musicians play there and fill up Piano Plaza. Shoes started getting taken again on the corner of 10th Avenue Street. This is the corner that symbolizes Bruce Springsteen and memorializes his clients coming. Beach cruisers started getting seen throughout Belmar again. Popular restaurants such as Surf Taco and Tempt Up Burrito started getting filled again. Although we all looked forward to spring when Strollo's reopened. There are so many popular things to do in Belmar. For example, deep sea fishing. Miss Belmar Princess is one of the most popular boats in Belmar Marina and goes out several times a day. In the summer, the Shark River also offers sailing, kayaking, and paddleboarding. Ocean activities in Baltimore include parasailing, surfing, and skimboarding. So come visit Baltimore, New Jersey, the strongest town on the Jersey Shore.
So, right to have three fine people. Can I have the parents of those three please stand up so we can have them? Patricia Glab, Donna, and Chris Cossie. Thank you. Uh, we have a few more uh, uh, resolutions. Um, these are for two outstanding individuals who um, uh, many people wouldn't see, but their their heroics uh, intertwine with everyone else on uh, on October 29th. <clears throat> They're both from Monmouth, uh, Monmouth County, and I'd like to ask uh, John to be to also come up. Um, Mark uh, Metzinger and Dave Milmo. <laughs> now, John runs the, uh, the county-wide Department of Public Works, and he lives right in Walt. So he, he takes very good care of us here in Delmar, so thank you. But let me just read this uh, resolution for these two gentlemen. We're at, on Mark, Mark, uh, October 29, 2012, Super Storm Sandy made landfall in Belmar, New Jersey, bringing the Atlantic Ocean to the streets of Belmar, flooding homes, destroying the boardwalk and oceanfront properties, placing residents in peril and leaving the entire town in darkness. And whereas, on October 29, Mark and Dave of the Monmouth County Department of Public Works and Engineering, Highway Division, responded in force with Belmar's Police Department and emergency personnel to execute over 200 rescues and coordinate shelters for residents, and whereas both Mark and David placed themselves in direct peril to swim through floodwaters and conduct countless rescues to bring Belmar residents and personnel to safety, and whereas the Monmouth County, uh, the County of Monmouth deployed vital equipment and vehicles with both Mark and Dave, specifically high water vehicles that made many dangerous rescues possible. Those are the big deuce and a half trucks that they had. Whereas the Borough of Belmar wishes to recognize uh, both Mark and Dave for their extraordinary courage and honorable performance in response to the devastation of Superstorm Sandy. Now, therefore, be resolved that uh, Mayor Matt Daugherty and the members of the Belmar Council hereby extend on behalf of all Belmar residents the deepest sense of gratitude to the County of Monmouth and specifically Mark Metzer and David Malone um, Nomo for their heroic actions to save lives in the wake of the storm. obviously still fresh in everybody's mind here in Belmar. But the important thing to note is on that night, there was a lot of resources that were deployed, but there was also a lot of resources that couldn't get to certain areas. And on that night, we asked for volunteers to go up to Union Beach, and Ron Boyce and Gary Freed. Gary is the su uh, Assistant Superintendent of Highways, Ron Boyce, General Supervisor of Highways. I went to them and I asked us, I need volunteers to go out in the county's military truck <coughs> to go perform rescues on individuals <coughs> that other departments could not get to. During that night, myself and the sheriff were on our way up to Union Beach. We could not get up there due to the devastation of down trees, even on the Navy Road. We ran into Mark and Dave on their way back because they couldn't get to Union Beach, and we redeployed them to Belmont. And as a result of that, they assisted your emergency services in the rescues. I cannot underscore what they did and their other members of their team. I have to tell you, in Highway, this particular group of individuals makes my job a lot easier on day-to-day -day operations, because they're, they're definitely the A-team as far as making the county shine as pre or known will test. This group it goes way far and beyond anything that's ever asked for them or what their job, so-called job responsibilities are. And these two individuals I'm extremely proud of and you and Belmar should be extremely proud of the dedicated workers there at Monmouth County. And like I said, I cannot say enough for both of you. So I would like to thank the mayor and the council and the administrator for recognizing these two gentlemen. It's always been a pleasure 
working with Belmar through the years, and more importantly during the uh, hurricane. Phil or no? Thanks, John. Uh, I also like to thank the mayor and the council for recognizing our staff because we recognize our staff and we recognize them. We try to recognize them at every freeholder meeting. This past freeholder meeting, we had many representatives that that worked tireless through that storm. And uh, I, as we all know, when we were all hit in some way or another, well, whether it was personally or with your family or relatives or friends, um, or neighbors. Uh, these men, and you know, we had to some way put it into perspective. We, we would come home at the end of the night, these guys stayed out, and they stayed out. And, and I was there often, and John and I, that happens to be one of my departments that I'm liaison on. So I would constantly be in contact with John, um, and we would continue to do more and more. And, our, and when we would deploy, and I would authorize more and more, John would deploy more and more. It was very easy for us to do that. It was guys like this that actually had to do the work. And, um, and that's what's most important. That's what we can't lose sight of, that we could sit there in our office and, and put these people out there and, and risk them, risk their lives, because they're out there risking their lives, taking them away from their family. It's very easy for us to say, can you go do this? Um, but they actually have to do it, and, and they did. And I, I commend you guys from the county, and you know I've done that many times, and I know Belmar does, and I thank the mayor and council for recognizing our staff. Just so that you get the magnitude, not that you don't hear in Belmar because you lived through it, but the instructions to these two gentlemen were do not go in water any deeper than the bottom of the doors. They were up to the steering wheels, and I know when they jumped out of the vehicle, they were up to their shoulders rescuing people. So that was the magnitude that they were dealing with and put their lives at risk to assist Belmar. So again, thank you all.
how we're changing government in the county. And we definitely, with no <coughs> doubt, have changed government on the county side. County was always the lost part of government. People say, you know, what does the county do? And, and, and quite frankly, my former position as the mayor of Borough of Neptune City for eight years, and then on the council prior to that for seven years, I actually wondered, what did the county do? Um, so when I decided to run, I did have to research it to see what they did. And, and I have to tell you, there was some lost things there that I think we could have done a little better or a little more. And, and not to slight any of the prior freeholders, just the way government works. <coughs> and um, so right now, I think the mayor and the council could attest to we've created many, many new programs with Belmar taking a lot of initiatives as the other 52 municipalities are. And we've moved, as we all know, probably the biggest thing with our shared services program, um, we moved into the communication side. And, and I have to emphasize, with all of our shared services that I'll move into, some things fit for a municipality, some don't. But we're large enough on the county side that I can assure you that there's something that we can offer to each and every municipality. And we've proven that to the smallest municipalities, to the largest ones of Middletown, that we're offering services to Middletown. And I, quite frankly, if a, if a municipality like Middletown can reach out to the county, I find it hard that there's not something for each and every municipality. So what we're trying to do is we created a business model. And the business model on a selfish side is we're looking out to increase our revenue. But we're looking out to increase our revenue at a cost savings to the municipality. I'll show a few quick examples on how we did that. I know you have a meeting tonight and I sat up there and I know many of the, the it's, they go quite long and you, you know, and you don't need somebody up here speaking for hours upon hours. But what we're doing is we've created, as I said, the communication. One of the biggest things we're doing now is with our public works. And we're moving the things we're doing there. Right now, we repair all of Asbury Park's fire trucks, all of Long Branch fire trucks, all of Red Bank's fire trucks. And today, we had a, a, a shared service seminar, which Colleen was at there today. And she saw, as the chief of Asbury Park was there, and you know, we all know that sometimes people uh, have the misconception of shared services being somewhat of a consolidation. That by no means is that what we're looking for. We're looking to come into and just helping in any avenue that we can through a municipality. So we're, we're moving in, and Asbury Park announced today that we saved them 40% on their budget this past year. And they're a pay fire company, so they have a lot of equipment that comes to us. And we save 40% on their line item. They're extremely pleased with the county. Red Bank is very pleased with the county. And now Long Branch has signed on. So there are three large municipalities that were able to maintain their equipment. We had a municipality call us uh, two weeks ago. And um, it was the borough of Neptune City. The mayor contacted me. Obviously, I have a relationship with the mayor of Neptune City. And he called me up and he said, Tom, listen, our front end loader went down. I hear you guys repair. Um, equipment or, or vehicles, could you fix our front end loader? I said, um, and obviously I call him Bob. I said, Bob, you gotta do me a favor. Go out, get a quote, 
call me back. Get a timeline on how it is because I didn't want anybody out there in the public to say that I'm going picking up Neptune City's equipment and repairing it. Um, so he went out there and I said, and he went out and got a quote to pick up the front end loader. They gave him a timeline of anywhere from seven to ten, ten days. They said it will cost $500 to pick it up. They gave him a quote of, I think it was close to $3,000 to, to repair it. I reached out to John to be it. We picked it up. Cost them $125 for us to pick them up, pick it up. We brought it back to them in three days and we charged them total bill was $1,600. So the residents of Neptune City saved money because they would have had to repair it to their only front end loader. You know, they're not a large municipality, you only have one. We, so we got it back to them on the road. We made revenue too. And the thing that I, I stated when I ran for election for freeholder was that I was very big on shared services coming from, um, the New Jersey Conference of Mayors, I served as president there, so I served with all the mayors through the state. And I vowed that all the revenue that we bring in, I am gonna offset with taxes. And, um, and that's what we're doing. So all the revenue that we're bringing in, we're just bring, giving it back to the taxpayers, so it's actually two-fold savings when we're able to save a municipality money on something like use the front end loader that they would have had to charge their residents for um, it would have came out of their taxes. There was a savings there that would be passed on. And then the, the revenue base that we're able to bring in, that I will pass on. So as we build that, uh, that model up, and we will build that model up, we're moving in now onto the IT. And I know Colleen was there today, and I think she'll pass on to the rest of the mayor and council today, that our IT department is, is off the charts, head over heels over probably any county in the state of New Jersey. Um, and as I said before, that's one of the uh, departments that Middletown signed in for. So, and that's, that's an avenue that a municipality, quite frankly, the mayor and council, I'm sure you feel like we got to spend the money, but nobody sees it. And um, so if you're able to save that money and obviously save and store that material at a lesser cost, you're able to put those dollars in, in something that you know, could be out there for your residents to see. Purchasing is another avenue. There's no way that there's a municipality in this, count, in this county that can purchase at the price that we're purchasing at. It's absolutely impossible. Sitting there as a mayor, we buy at such bulk. So our cooperative <laughs> purchasing program, now we're reaching out to all the municipalities to purchase through us. So what, what we're trying to build here is, is just a partnership. And uh, you know, you have Belmar, you have Neptune City, you have Spring Lake, you have all these towns that are so unique, all the way to Upper Freehold. Okay, and they all have their, their niche and they want to keep it, and they should keep it. And I'm in favor of them all keeping that. But I think we got to share a little bit more to make sure that you know, we're able to keep the great services that Belmar gives and that the county gives. We, it's hard for us to give to a municipality. The only way we can do it is by assisting and gaining through a revenue base. So that's probably our biggest initiative. And now we're moving forward with our Grow Mama presentation. And I know I was here once before with that. And uh, that's continuing. And we're bringing big businesses here to Monmouth County. We just, um, I had a representative contact me in my office, uh, two representatives from New York. I didn't know exactly what they were contacting us, myself, for. And uh, they came into my office and they told me that they wanted to come to Monmouth County. And I, again, didn't know who they were and it was Sloan Kettering. Sloan Kettering will be off exit 114 in Middletown. They were going to purchase a facility there and they have to say that they are moving here to Middletown for many reasons, not because of... Tom Arnold's Grow Mammoth uh, Initiative, but they will tell you that they're moving here. Also, one of the biggest, biggest advantages was the streamlining process where I reached out to the mayor of Middletown, which I have a, a great relationship with. He was able to bring it in, and I have to tell you, he moved meetings quick. He moved, he brought the initiatives there because it's something here that not will only benefit them through a rateable, it's gonna bring roughly over 200 people, 200 new jobs. From, uh, from blue collar to white collar jobs here in Monmouth County, but more importantly, I looked at the data of, and this is, this is unfortunate, the data of how many of our Monmouth County residents go to Sloan Kettering in New York. So if we're able to bring that program here, you know, it's bad enough when you have to attend the facility there, but if we can make it a little easier here in Monmouth County, that's something that's, that's very big to us. So we're gonna to continue to grow on that, bring businesses here. We've sold property, we had a piece of property in Freehold, we had a business there, a vitamin store called IBC. Um, I reached out to the rest of the freeholders. They were in agreement we should sell the piece of property. It was adjacent to that. Our business now is going to expand, bring over 100 jobs there to freehold. 
So that's the goal that we have to try to, to bring about. Um, they're two of my biggest departments. My other department, obviously, something that's very passionate to me is tourism. And um, obviously, Belmar's going to take a uh, big, big, uh, very big part of that, as long as, as, as well as the whole shore. So we're going to move forward. We're going to increase our marketing off the charts this year. We have an extreme big marketing department. They're going to be extremely focused on tourism this year. We're holding the tourism uh, roundtable on March 2nd at our Monmouth County Connection Building in Neptune. And we're going to ask at least a representative. I know you have a big day here. It's a big weekend for you here. But if you could send some representative to give us ideas. And that's what we're looking for, ideas from municipalities on what you need from us. Because we'll be there for you. We're going to, I have uh, Jeannie DeYoung, which is recognized all over through the state of New Jersey. Her focus for the next three months is make sure that people know that we're open. We're open for business because not only does it benefit Belmore, it benefits the county too. And, um, and we all have to share in this. It was, a, it was a very unfortunate time that happened, but um, we're resilient as Belmar is resilient. We'll move forward and uh, we'll be better than ever. And um, Belmar, you know that the freeholders are there for you. Um, and uh, Mayor, you've reached out to me. Council, you've reached out to me. And please continue. And Colleen, yourself too. I know you have a great relationship with our administrator. And please continue that relationship. And I also want to thank uh, Trail Director. Um, you know, Ocean Avenue, a lot of people don't recognize, is a county road. So for us to be able to, to have the boardwalk done uh, in time for Memorial Day, which is imperative for our, our town, um, we need their assistance. Uh, and they've been great uh, and wonderful. And it just shows you the, the great partnership we have uh, working with Monmouth County and working with Trail Director uh, on them. Uh, we look forward to uh, continuing that in the future. Thank you. Um, I just have a quick question. Sure. Um, what is the scope of your purchasing cooperative service? What would that? What might those items include that we could purchase through your services? It's all your supplies. There's, really? There's nothing. That, there's nothing that you cannot. We. I mean, I, I find it highly unlikely that there's something here in the in the municipality that we don't purchase. I believe I get the bill list every free owners meeting and I'm sure that uh, we purchase it because we have such a large purchasing department and we actually have probably, and, um, and of course I'm very prejudiced to this when I say we have the best employees because we truly do. Our county employees are head over heels the top employees in the state of New Jersey and we have Jerry Hopkins head of that department and, um, and she does, she's recognized all over the state as John DeLina is with building his grounds. And, and we say that over and over, but we had a shared service seminar today, and we had a representative there from the state of New Jersey, and um, you know, Senator Sweeney will not let her, will not let her say that um, our shared service department is better than his former uh, county, but um, we talk, he's big on shared services as, as we are, and um, so they always compare both counties there hand in hand, but I can tell you that we are by far uh, the number one shared service county, and, and purchasing wise too. And you know, it takes, it gives a lot of relief. And Colleen, I think you heard that today, that I'm sure you're gonna pass on to the council. Um, there's no better way to go cost savings wise than purchasing through the county. I just also want to compliment your Monmouth County Health Department as uh, head of the mayor's wellness campaign here in Belmar. Yes. I've utilized their services many times. Most recently, they came and administered 87 flu shots free of charge. And I think over 50 tetanus shots here uh, on December 19th. So that's just one of the many, many times they've been here to Belmar and they service us during my a health fair in the fall. So I want to just compliment them to you as well. Terrific. Thank you. And uh, let me get we're so proud of our Thank you. And uh, uh, Director uh, Arnold has uh, promised me he'll be here to celebrate St. Patrick's Day Parade. Yes, sir. I was here for San Gennaro. I have to come to San Patrick's Day. <laughs> Thank you. Um, ne next on our workshop discussion, uh, I passed around a picture of the uh, lighting uh, that's going to be uh, going up on the boardwalk. This is, came out of uh, Councilman McGovern's uh, committee. Um, two things are sound. Uh, one is actually that light time. Uh, one that goes over the boardwalk and one that goes over the street. <coughs> and the lighting that goes over the street is going to be bright enough that we'll be able to take down the lights on the west side of Ocean Avenue. Um, so it'll, it'll aesthetically look better and also saves us about fifteen to $16,000 a year uh, with JCP and um, 
So this is the, the type of lighting we're looking at. Um, the, uh, after that is the, uh, the playground equipment, um, particularly the last, the last two. Uh, if you recall, uh, Belmar had four playgrounds on the beach, uh, and um, you know, as a family-friendly town, it was nice that we had the most playgrounds, the most free playgrounds on the sand of any town, uh, from Sandy Hook down to Cape May. Uh, so we're going to look to replace them um, with upgraded, um, upgraded playgrounds. Um, but they're the last two. So they're going to go back in the same spots, 4th, 8th, 10th, and 16th. Um, and um, we may include uh, uh, some type of a, um, a workout activity area as well uh, for kids. So we're seeing if that works into it. But those playgrounds uh, will be ordered, uh, and they'll be in place yes. by Memorial Day weekend. Yes. Uh, so as important it is to get the boardwalk done, and tonight we also talk about our trailers that we're going to have up there, uh, we got to make sure that we have our playgrounds so we continue to be a, a very family-friendly uh, uh, destination. Picnic tables? Yes, ma'am. How many picnic tables do we have now? As many as Miss Nicolet wants. <laughs> <laughs> Being a mother of small children, every time I went to the playground, it would sit in the sand and it was hot and uncomfortable. And I had asked if there could be um, picnic tables at each playground. And they were put in place and tons of visitors and residents and families utilized them. So it was great to see that. I think it was a nice addition. Um, so we'll try to get more um, picnic tables. And we're going to get this up on the website. And we'll have this up on the website for everyone to take a look at as well. Um, <coughs> and the next topic I had for, for a workshop is um, <coughs> regarding bidding. Um, one of the things uh, I think would be useful is for the town to go out to bid now um, for um, services <coughs> for cleanup from a disaster like we had. So in other words, let's go out now as a town and bid those services, um, let's say we do it for two years. So um, just use an example of, say, March 15th. We would ask for bids to come in uh, by you know, March 15th and lock in the prices for two years. So that could be uh, sand sifting or uh, pumping out water, picking up debris, um, recycling, carting it off. Um, <coughs> And, and have those prices in place now, um, and God forbid anything close to what happened uh, this past October uh, ever happens again, we would literally have a list of pre-qualified, pre-priced contractors to choose from. So, you know, one of our requirements would be that they'd have to be able to deploy uh, within 24 hours. And we would look for it, we would, we would put the right language in so that we'd only get qualified contractors. Uh, we're not looking for, you know, uh, the Matt and Brian with a uh, couple hammers and a pickup truck. Uh, you know, we're looking I for folks. I lost in the storm. <laughs> <laughs> we're looking for folks that have, you know, the, the type of equipment that was used previously uh, that could deploy in 24 hours, uh, that have experience with these type of, uh, of, of, of situations. Um, and I think we'll bid it a whole bunch of different ways. So you could bid the entire thing <clears throat> or you could bid just uh, water removal, or you could bid just um, you know debris pickup, or you could bid just uh, sand sifting, and we'll look at all those and have that almost like a menu, uh, a predetermined menu. Again, hopefully we never ever have to use it, but at least this time uh, we'll have it in place beforehand. Um, and the analogy I use is look. You know, residents are going to put in pilots to increase their height of their homes. God forbid something like this happens again. Well, as a municipality, we too should be as prepared as possible. So going out to bid now for those services, locking them in for, say, a two-year commitment, and when the two years is up, we just rebid it again. Uh, and again, when they, hopefully never, but if an event like that ever happens again, we'll have those pre-qualified, predetermined prices that were already competitively bid, either six months before the event, uh, 18 months before the event, um, whatever that would occur. So 
we, we'd like to uh, get the authority of the council uh, to go out to bid and see what we uh, see what we get back. Um, I have a couple of questions. Sure. Uh, I was going to ask you about uh, the bidding. Of the all, I was taught thinking all inclusive and or individual services. Would there be two levels of bidding, or would it be one level of bid? Well, we learned a lot from the bid we did with our boardwalk. So uh, we would do it sort of like we did with our boardwalk. You could build the whole thing, or you could build the whole thing, and then we would get the materials. Uh, in this case, uh, with Epic, their materials came in less expensive than the materials we could have got by ourselves. Um, and, you know, they're the lowest bidder. They're doing a phenomenal job. Yeah. But it's how you put the language in to ensure that you get that type of uh, quality uh, contractor. So we'll see what the prices come back. Uh, we'll see if, you know, maybe someone at a whole package could do it better than anyone else individually. Mm -hmm. Or maybe, you know, someone can do the whole package except, you know, there's one company that can do the pump outs better. So we'll take one company that a does the same. <laughs> right, but we'll have maybe multiple columns. I mean, we'll look at all the things, generators. Remember, we had generators that we needed. Right. Uh, we were able to uh, get a generator to busy be laundromat. Um, because people hadn't done laundry in a while, and Councilman Nicolay started to get a little, you know. <laughs> um, so, so it's important to have, you know, to take a look at all the things we needed, the services, uh, the equipment, everything we needed post hurricane, and now bid it out, you know, nowadays, next month or so, so that we have that uh, predetermined list. God forbid something like happens again. Would the bidding time frame be ongoing, or would you? some point say, you know, that's the end? Um, you know, we'd probably, again, we'd probably do it like the, uh, uh, you know, like, like, like the boardwalk. Um, you know, probably give people two weeks. Yeah, I, I There's no like rush all, on it. That's what I'm thinking. I might like to go a little bit longer in this case. Yes. Yeah. You certainly have a lot of time. We, we have time. Yeah, we have time. But the idea is, is to start to go out now uh, to get those prices, particularly while what just happened is still relatively fresh in these contractors' minds right. so they can give uh, as accurate uh, prices uh, as possible. Absolutely. I think it's excellent that you're being proactive in this regard. I think it's a very smart way to go. So I support it. Right. Right. Um, just a little bit on the cynical side. Uh, obviously, I, I feel if they're a low bidder, the quality of their work, um, can we put anything in there that requires them to have trained workers, or can we get a look to see the quality of the jobs that they've done in, in the past? Because, you know, just because they have the machine, do, do they have trained people? I, I think Epic was very good because we put in that PLA, and uh, I, I think by having people that are trained, they can do the job better the first time than having inexperienced people do it and then have to go back and redo the work. So how can we ensure that we get a good company that came in low? So I think we, we have a couple of tools in our toolbox on that front, one of which um, we are going to be very aggressive in terms of what qualifications you need to exemplify in order to have a successful bid. Um, bonding capacity could be one to make sure that they have that financial gravitas to be able to bond for the full amount of their, their bid. Um, we can um, certainly and as we always do, um, strictly enforce prior experience so that we have um, demonstrated success on previous jobs, exhibit that you've never been terminated um, from a public service jobs of this nature, or withhold payment. Um, so there are, <coughs> are tools in our toolbox that we can deploy, um, demonstrate workforce, things of that nature. So our intention is to um, be very clear from the aspect about the types of companies that are probably capable of doing yeah, two years is a long time. They, they might be good now for six months, and then two years from now, they could have a turnover. Um, you know, it's just, just, you know, just a two, it's a good idea. It's a great idea. As long as we get a, a company that can do the work well. <coughs> Usually, 
move it backwards than what most companies do. Usually a company pays another company to be on standby in case a disaster happens. So Colleen, we're, we're asking a company to bid us out on something that we don't really know how much it's gonna be. I mean, how do we tell a company how much sand we're gonna need sifted? Well, a lot of this goes by unit measure. And it doesn't necessarily need to dictate the volume of the emergency. But the bigger the amount, the cheaper the price. Meaning, you know, just to bring that equipment in for a little bit, mm -hmm. compared to bringing that equipment in for a large amount, we're going to probably get a, it's going to be a bigger price, but a bigger price per, you know, unit. Yeah, but you would bid it that way. Yeah. So, you know, if you think about sand, you could, um, I don't know, one, you know, 10,000 uh, cubic yards, 50,000. 80,000, 100,000, we have different breakpoints. And if you know we, we sign this contract with them that we're going to pay them and all of a sudden a disaster hits and they get another contract somewhere else for four times the price, they may be like, look, I'll take a penalty with Belmar. I'm going up north where I get four times the amount. But no, the idea is not to sign a contract with them. We're just getting their prices. OK. OK. Well, and certainly you can't plan for every eventuality. And so if, if the contractor would, by the time of the deployment, um, have folded by that point, uh, not have the workforce to perform at the capacity that they bid on, um, there's, there's number two. There's um, options. Please. There's options. Okay. Hey, it's not for bid. I don't see any problems with well. um, No, I think it's a great idea just to be prepared. Um, I do like the idea of the three options. I think obviously one with myself at risk in case anything happens. Um, I'm going to suggest the tiered level because we don't know. Hopefully it doesn't happen. You know, the um, level of catastrophe or the problem that we face. Um, no, I think it's a great idea because then we're prepared. You know, I think we did an incredible job not knowing what we were getting hit with and then if we're more prepared, it's even better. Um, what do I think? Should we maybe think of also hiring a Belmar watchdog to watch? Because if there's an emergency, Mike Campbell is too busy getting his DPW. I think we should have someone watching these construction people. I, I read the paper where some people charge by the truckload, and they're pulling out with only half the truck built. You know, uh, or by weight. You know, they say we're okay. We'll charge you by the ton. You know, how do we measure? So I think if we also in the background have an experienced person, not the DPW, because they're, they're going to be working too, have a watchdog on this company, you know, uh, making sure they're, they're sending out full truckloads. I, I, I'm getting a little Sorry. cynical about no, it. No, I think your point is incredibly valid. And, and in this emergency, um, that tactic was, was a foot on the ground. FEMA requires, in, in, in order to get reimbursement for disasters such as this, a monitor. Um, these are guys who check to make sure the trucks are of the right capacity, that they are filled with uh, vegetative debris or white goods. Um, they were on the ground in this emergency, um, and they were verifying every single truckload, every single uh, sorry load of sand. We did have that. Great. Okay. So we would, we would just do that same monitoring in the future. Again, it's, you know, this would only be a disaster that, uh, you know, we would be engaged in FEMA. Um, So, so we'd have to adhere to their guidelines. What if it was an emergency that didn't require FEMA? Something below a disaster or something? Well, that's, I mean, honestly, if, if, if that's the case, then more than likely our DPW would be able to, to manage a lot of it. Uh, but this would just be for, you know, this would be for a, a Sandy-like uh, event. Okay. Um, now, now, also, you know, we did use pumps mm -hmm. after I mean. Um, so maybe in that case we would, but, you know, after, after Hurricane Irene, we were, we were fine taking care of everything ourselves, right? Fine yeah. yeah. So, I mean, this, this is, again, hopefully we never have to do this again. But uh, it seems to be smart to, to be prepared. Wasn't the fun. Okay. Uh, all right, so, uh, Squash, would I need to make a motion? Yes. All right, so I'll make a motion that uh, we go out to bid. Um, services put on bid for okay. emergency services. Right, for emergency services. Again, when it's emergency services, just. Post disaster, you know, we all know what the event would be. Second. Second.
Yes. Council Bean? Yes. Council Nicholas? Yes. Yes. Uh, that's all I have for workshop discussion. Anyone have any workshop discussions up or not? Um, I just have a question for a business administrator. When will our community room be open for community residents to utilize? Because I know the Belmont Women's Club is looking to hold executive board meetings in that room. Um, so hot off the presses, just before coming into this room, I received an email from the Small Business Administration of FEMA that um, informs me that they plan to wrap up their operations in the DRC by mid-March. So our plan would be to have our community center, as planned previously prior to the storm, open for April 1. Wonderful. And I have another question for you. Uh, to what extent do we use the purchasing services of the county? You know, it, Predating me, I, I, I'm afraid I can't speak with that much authority. Um, okay. You know, during the storm, there wasn't much cooperative purchasing. Um, but from what I learned today, I think there's there's several opportunities that could be advantageous for us to piggyback on the sheer volume of things that they are purchasing. Director Campbell actually has already been in conversations with uh, County uh, Department of Public Works with regards to street signs, parking signs, stop signs, things of that nature. Um, so again, as a much larger purchasing body, they have great power of, uh, of purchasing. And I think there's many avenues that we can pursue on. It sounds like it's, the scope is huge. Yes. So. Well, just as we need pencils, they need pencils, right? And so just as we have a motor pool, they have a motor pool. So there are a lot of shared opportunities there. Great. Thank you for pursuing them. Uh, that closes our workshop. Uh, any petitions from the Thomas Berg, 608 10th Avenue. I have a petition here. Put my glasses on because I have to read it. A copy for everyone. To Mayor and Council, dated today's date, in accordance with New Jersey Statutes Title 40A, colon 9-22, known as the Local Government Ethics Law, and specifically Section 19 of that law, and in, I, as an, as an individual of the Borough of Hel uh, Belmar, Mm -hmm. New Jersey do hereby petition the Mayor and Council of Belmar to create and adopt an ordinance that would create a local ethics board. I further petition that said ordinance be established in accordance with the section cited above uh, and other pertinent sections of the local government ethics law. The vitality and stability of our local form of government depends upon our confidence and integrity of the Mayor and Council and other appointed officials. You, the governing body, have the duty to provide the citizens of Belmar with standards of ethical conduct and financial disclosures for all government employees and elected officials. Recent situations in Belmar have led public to public complaint by individuals, both within and outside local government, concerning actions and some inaction that would appear to challenge the integrity and standards and conduct of our public officials. This open public challenge of integrity of our Officials is not healthy for our community. It not only can serve to inappropriately brand an individual, but can exude an air of disdain toward the community. It is my conviction that if an ethics ordinance were in existence, those situations that have recently occurred could have been avoided in the public forum. In accordance with the local government ethics law complaints, could have been directed to the ethics committee for determination or adjudication. This type of action would serve as greatly in pres preserving and presenting Belmar as a good and just community. Thank you. I would be interested in any comments any of the uh, council may have on this. Well, I'll take a look at it and take it into consideration. Anyone else? I'm going to have to agree. I'm going to have to read it and, you know, see what we got. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're positioning to Sorry, can you explain, just right? explain it in <coughs> common sense, common <coughs> language. The petition is the, it's called the Local Government Ethics Law is, is the 15 or 20 page document that outlines specifically how to create a local board of ethics. And I'm suggesting that it would serve Belmar quite well to create such a local board so that some of the situations that have occurred here over the last four months could have been avoided. Uh, they could have been avoided in a public forum. They could have been avoided in the press. And I think it would have been much better off for the borough of Belmar had it been handled that way. 
Thank you for your time. Uh, next are reports of the council. Oh, let's move the minutes first, sorry. I move that the minutes of the regular meeting held on February 6, 2013 be approved as recorded and that a copy thereof be posted on the borough's website. Second. Yes. 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 Okay. Um, I'll be quick. Uh, we're, we're moving along with the plans for the uh, Silver Lake Island replanting project, uh, which is scheduled, scheduled for Saturday, April 20th, um, which is Earth Day weekend. Dorsey Latza and Carolyn Sykes uh, met just yesterday, and uh, they'll soon be going out to the island uh, to kind of stake it out and prepare where they want to plant the new trees, new shrubs, and the other plantings along the lake. Um, weather permitting. Uh, the DPW will soon uh, be going out there uh, and putting down a pre-emergent uh, herbicide to prevent uh, the weeds from getting a start uh, this spring, uh, which would make the uh, planting for us later in April much easier. Um, so that's what I have for that. So we're still working on that. Uh, on a, kind of like a side note, this Monday, on ESPN, Connecticut, number two in the country, is playing Notre Dame, number three in the country. McKayla Mabry will be on television. <coughs> it will be an exciting game. The last time they played, McKayla hit the go-ahead three-point shot late in the game for Notre Dame to upset Connecticut. And very possibly, there might be another Belmar person out there on the court, Denise Brooks. She'll probably, she has a good chance of being the, one of the officials for that game. <coughs> so, that'll be good for Belmar. Big game, Monday night, 8 p.m., ESPN. Thank you. Council President. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm proud to report that our local breast cancer support group, Belmar Cares, is in the process of purchasing a board as part of the Buy a Board project for our Boardwalk Replacement Initiative at the level of $250. If you recall, two years ago, I collaborated with Belmar's Historical Council of which Councilman McGovern and his wife are members, in creating a memories booklet, longtime Belmar residents recorded poignant mem memories of growing up in our beloved Shore community. The booklet was so successful that we're working on putting together memories book two, and I think we have almost 30 entries for that new booklet. Hopefully it will be available for your enjoyment in the next few months. For the past three years, Belmar has been participating in Choose Your Cover, a free skin cancer screening which was held at Taylor Pavilion. I've been contacted by representatives of Central State Medical Facility and the Monmouth County Cancer Coalition, who are co-sponsors of the event. They wanted to know if we're still interested in being part of this. The program is held in July. So we're working on the details of this presently. We'll probably have to hold the screenings on the beach under tents, but I would like to continue. This would be our fourth year. Going along with summer happenings, I've learned from Kevin Gann, our newly named recreation director, that summer con concerts usually held at Taylor Pavilion on Monday evenings in the summer will now take place at the gazebo by the lake at Fifth and Ocean Avenues. This is great news for our music lovers. Ladies, please remember our Women's Health Expo to be held here at the Borough Gym on Saturday, March 30th. The event is being co-sponsored by Mayor's Wellness Campaign and our breast cancer support group, Belmar Cares. It's March 30th, beginning at 1 p.m. This program is being designed to assist women to stay strong and healthy as they mature. Kevin Gann, our rec director, is helping me to put together the program. I'm delighted that I've been asked to read at Belmar School for the Dr. Seuss birthday on March 1st as part of the Read Across America program. I tried to bring to Belmar the free tax preparation program sponsored by the IRS, but couldn't pull it off. So the next best thing is to offer information about where you can receive free tax prep assistance at the Walton Township Library, which is a Monmouth County library at 2700 Alaire Road. This program is running from February 13th through April 13th, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays 
from one to four. So if you would like to take advantage of the program, please contact the Wall Public Library. <coughs> Um, also, Ocean Mammoth Legal Services is providing free legal assistance for people with questions having to do with Hurricane Sandy. You can call 732-866-0020 for information. I wish to congratulate <coughs> for, former council president, Mary Brennan, on the publication of her book, Peace Pilgrim. She is truly a renaissance person, one of many talents. Lastly. I wish to commend our DPW staff on jobs well done during our most recent storm. I appreciate that very much. <laughs> I was sitting listening to television. I, I stay up late at night, like 1 o'clock in the morning, watching TV. And when I hear the trucks and the clouds come out, I think, wonderful. So I appreciate that very much. Um, that's all I have. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mayor, I'm very concerned about the finances of the town, the FEMA checks. Can you see where we, how are we with our FEMA checks? We are fishing every day. We have not received it yet. Do we have a date, any indication? We received word service? that we are close to the end of the queue for the state, uh, for state police to release the money. Um, but no date, they don't want to commit to a date, and have not been able to obtain that. Okay. Um, Mayor, I have... I had uh, gotten a copy from Colleen, thank you, of the, uh, the check register, and these are all for manual checks. I just have a couple questions that I, I, I just want to make sure that everything's good to go here. Um, on November 11th, November 21st, I'm sorry, uh, we purchased $18,000 worth of gift cards from ShopRite. I, I thought the gift card thing was done and, and put away. Can you, uh, just curious of what this is about. Uh, sure, our social services director uh, went out and shopped um, some of the uh, food stores, grocery stores in the area, to try to get a, uh, the best deal possible. And she was able to purchase $20,000 worth of gift cards at $18,000 from ShopRite. Uh, with those gift cards, I believe we allocated somewhere around um, uh, $3,000 or so to the uh, senior building uh, here in Belmar. Um, the reason why we chose the senior building was because you have to be under a certain, uh, certain income level uh, to qualify to live there. And then we gave the other $17,000 worth to the Belmar Elementary School uh, for them to distribute to families that qualify for their free <coughs> reduced uh, lunch program and, um, and, and families that are um, in, in tough financial needs, uh, situations that, that, uh, that they knew of. Um, so it was a total of 20,000 I was able to get with, uh, with 18,000. Uh, it was all distributed um, to those two spots. Was this taxpayer dollars? Was this donated money? Where did we get this money from? It was 100% donated dollars that came into our Belmar.com uh, website. And we put into the general fund and cut the check out of the general fund. Uh, I don't exactly want, know what our uh, our did, but uh, we can't stop for house yeah, well, it was cut out of our general fund. I really thought, you know, you get almost laundering of money. You, you kind of want to keep your donated money outside of your municipal budget so that you don't get it all mixed up. I think that our accounting practices and the ability of our CFO far exceed. Well, I believe you, but it's the DCA that really wants the stuff separated. And we do have a very um, good dedication by rider that governs how this money is expensive. But we voted on that after we cut these gift certificates. Oh, yeah. We didn't wait for a dedication by Ryder to start feeding our residents. It was, okay. Uh, you know what? Um, and it was Kelly that handed all these out? Is that correct? Yeah, Kelly handled the distribution. All of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, because all my OPAR, well, none of this was even included. I think your OPAR applied to cards that were donated to the borough. Um, actually, it was cards that were received by the borough. Not donated, but I, you know, I, that's that's fine. Um, I, did we vote on this? Was this in the payment of bills? This eighteen thousand? I mean, it, it, we cut a check for it. I mean, how does I mean, was, was it a bill to from them? them? Well, all, all payments are approved by council. I'll have to go back through the through the bill list and see what we need. So you think we did, or you don't know? Because I went through all the paid bills. I did not see it. <coughs> I could be very very wrong. I could be wrong. I didn't see it. You know. 
My second question, Mayor, how does it work with, we seem to be cutting checks manually and then voting on them days later, months later. Can, 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 I don't see an emergency, just explain to me how this works. I'm not quite sure. Well, in the instance you brought up, uh, we took $18,000 that was donated uh, and we purchased $20,000 worth of gift cards to ShopRite. Um, you know, <coughs> couldn't wait for the next council meeting. Um, and under a state of emergency, the, the, the mayor was the authority to, to, to make those decisions. So, um, and I did. Okay, uh, under the authority, you're allowed to spend the money and then we build on it later? I, I'm just, correct. is that what it means? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I, because I guess my question is, if the check is already paid, why do we even vote on it? I mean, we don't need our vote to come to check. Why do we even have a vote? Um, the state of New Jersey required it. And not just us, by the way, all 564 of these houses. Say that the mayor may cut checks as he wants and then we, the council votes on it days later. Or months no, later. No, uh, in, in a declared state of emergency, um, the, the, the mayor has authority to, to, to expend money. Uh, and then afterwards, it has to be agreed by the I, that, It sounds so weird that you're able to just spend and then we have to approve it even though the, the, the check is cut. Because um, I, I, today, on the pay to bills, is Jimmy Albertus today, and I'm friends with Jim Alberta, so I have no problem with Jim, and it's for his, I guess his vehicle, but we already cut him a check months ago um, in December. Why are we voting now on a check that was already cut? I mean, what if we all vote no? What happens? I guess this question would take with TCA. <laughs> if you want me to. I, 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 <laughs> no, no, I mean, uh, I'm not well, hold on. We did that. I'm just asking the procedure. Is, is that how it works? We cut checks and then we vote on it. Is that the procedure? In a state of emergency, that does happen. It's the center's one. Okay, because I, I, I tell you, I, other towns, I know they had special appropriation meetings. They authorized and then they move forward. You know, I know the mayor has the ability to sign contracts, and I believe you said. I have the authority to execute contracts and appropriate money as I deem necessary. I guess you do have appropriate money. Um, I, personally, I'm not going to vote on anything anymore that the check has already been cut and gone because you don't need my approval. It's already, it's already done. So anything now that I see has already been paid for, I'm just going to abstain because you don't need my vote. Okay. Number one. Uh, my last thing, Mayor, is talking about contracts that are signed without us even appropriating the money for it is um, the, let's see, this, this is, what is this, for our, this is uh, approved by Ash, the Ashford contract signed by Bill Young. And I, as I look at this, it's for 1.6, 1,600,000. ,600, Can you tell me how, I, I know you stepped away from this, you didn't want to sign it. How did Bill Young come to sign this? Can you, like, who said Bill sign this? Did he do it on his own? How did that work? Um, I think we discussed this already. Um, Bill Young was the business administrator, and, and he has the authority to sign contracts. Okay, I, I went through the, the, the Belmar ordinances, the, the Belmar code book, and nowhere in here does the <coughs> borough administrator ever get the power to sign contracts, because He's an elected official, and I'll tell you why it bothers me. Um, it, it's possible that if something goes wrong with FEMA, and FEMA says, we're not cutting the check because something went wrong with pick a company, Ashford. So <laughs> they come back and they say, hey, so we challenge Ashford in court. And when we go to court and it comes up that the person that actually signed the contract might not have the authority to sign the contract, I, I get a little worried. I mean, that comes out of Jim Bean's pocket then. We don't get our check. And if you will, I, I have the um, Article 1, the Organization Power Meetings and Rules of the Borough, but I want to read them here for you real quick. And uh, I'll tell you, um, it, it, it basically reads that, that Section 2-3B of the Borough Ordinance states that the council president shall serve in the place of the mayor in the event of his or her absence, disability, or refusal to act as acting mayor, and I believe when you stepped away saying, hey, 
I'm personally associated with this company, it would actually fell to the council president to sign and not the borough administrator. And I even looked up with the borough administrator um, in charge, administrator in charge, and has nothing at all about signing contracts. I, I'm, I'm just worried here. Can you ease my mind a little bit, Mayor? Um, take it, Kat. Oh, I don't know. How many contracts? Who signed a contract with, with um, Epic? <coughs> With Epic, he did. Who physically wrote their name on it? Hmm? Who physically wrote their name on it? Who physically wrote their name on the contract? Who's going to physically write their name on the contract to purchase the playground equipment? Typically, the business administrator. Business administrator. Uh, I, I'm, I, I have a full time job. I'm not in the office. Right. The, the, the business administrator executes contracts. Mem members of the council cannot execute contracts, but the business administrator. You know what, reading 3-1 establishment administrator in charge, it has nothing in here at all about executing contracts. And this is out of our code book. Well, we'll take a look at it for you and get a legal opinion. Well, I, 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 I'm sure there's nothing in the ordinance for administrator. No, but there is, there is a, a chain of command of who is supposed to be in charge if the mayor can't do it. And I don't think that was followed. And I'm just saying, if we go to court, can they challenge us? Can they say, hey, here's an unelected official signing $1.6 million worth of contracts? Well, anybody can challenge anything in court, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there's validity to the challenge. So my position is that there would be no validity to that so, challenge. So even though they follow the, if they just go off of the, um, off of the uh, code book, you know, our code book, we didn't follow it, that's nothing to worry about. Well, there's, right, there's, that's nothing to worry about. There's certainly nothing in the code book which prohibits the business <laughs> Okay, I, you know what, guys? You're the legal experts. You're saying that. Well, we'll we, will, we will get a, a clearer understanding from you from DCA, but um, the current business administrator, the previous one, and the one previous to him have all executed contracts on behalf of the borough dollars. In the state of emergency. Well, it doesn't matter if it's state of emergency or not. Actually, it does, because you emailed me and said, because we're not operating a declared state of emergency, I have the authority to execute contracts and appropriate money as I see necessary. Right, and I didn't say the business administrator does not. I know that, but your code book doesn't say, yeah. I, listen, I, I'm just a little more information from PCA for you. Uh, you know what? All right, guys. Mayor, that's all I got. Okay. Mayor, Councilwoman Nicole. On a lighter note, I um, just want to go through my updates. Uh, the Belmar Elementary School uh, registration for pre-K and kindergarten uh, started today and it's going through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Uh, if you're registering your children, you will need an original copy of their birth certificate. The School Health Council has begun planning a community garden. A project designed to refurbish and reseed the guard beds in the front of the school to provide opportunities for teachers to plan curricular activities which utilize the outdoor space in the garden in the project. Uh, first annual uh, reconvening of the Strategic Planning Council was held on Wednesday the 6th in which the progress of the myriad activities designated for year one school improvements were addressed. Uh, if you'd like to see um, information on that, there's a slideshow on the Belmont Elementary website. Uh, the Belmont Youth Club, I uh, just want to start by thanking all the parents that um, volunteered to help it run. It is just a great program. <coughs> here. Um, we do have some of the parents here that dedicate a lot of time in putting this program together. Uh, but they're having their annual snow tubing trip um, this Sunday, the 24th. And it, uh, it's being held at Camelback Mountains in the Poconos. Um, Little League registration is February 21st, 23rd, 27th, and March 2nd. Those are Wednesdays and Thursdays, uh, 6 to 9, Saturdays 9.30 to 12.30. Uh, toddler Time is hosting its first Turtles and Snakes event, which will be 9.30 to 11, and on February 21st. Um, and Recreation Basketball is coming to a close. Uh, they're going to be an awards night on the 6th, and a Hot Shot contest on the 9th. Just want to thank DPW. Um, every week I get a, a big stack of all their work orders that they do. They're doing a tremendous job with you know, the two snowstorms. Um, in fact, about a week ago, I was driving through town. It was a huge pile.
pile of glass in the road, call the DPW, and it's cleaned up within the hour. And I thought that was just great that they were able to, able to get to that. Um, and lastly, um, I've been asked to serve on the Tour Tourism Commission, uh, which has been a great honor. I attended the first meeting last week. Um, between that and the Belmar Business Partnership, who's doing a tremendous job, they're really promoting the different events within the town. Um, and I would just highly recommend, you know, especially for the year coming forward, we've got the parade, seafood festival, cruise nights, um, San Gennaro feast. Um, just let relatives and friends know about it. Give them a heads up a few weeks out as they put on their calendar and let other friends know to come down to these great events. That's all for me. Thank you. Um, I'll give you an update on where we are up on the beachfront. Um, our construction company, Epic, is doing an outstanding job. Uh, pilings are currently at 17th Avenue. Uh, when I went there today, unfortunately, they ate through all the pilings. Uh, so these guys are moving faster than uh, Lindy's, the piling company. The, uh, the, the pile drivers, they're actually moving faster than we can get pilings to them. Um, so they're doing an outstanding job. Uh, the girders are now past 15th Avenue. Uh, the stringers, which are on top of the girders, are at 4th Avenue, and the decking is starting to get applied now between 1st uh, and 2nd. Um, so that, um, you know, by the end of this month, uh, we should have all the pilings done, um, bearing any, or barring any issues with supply. Uh, and then right behind that, you can see the, it's like a rating, 15th, 4th, <coughs> starting the, uh, the decking. Um, at the same time, um, you know, one of the important projects we're into now uh, is, is something that we've, you know, been doing, if you go back to the, uh, the gift cards, and that is really taking care of our own. Um, we started a grant program um, with a total of $300,000, and um, started this last week. So far, we've had 44 families apply um, for a total of $196,000 in awards. Um, which is, you know, if, if you look at what other towns are doing, um, no one's doing some of the things we're doing <coughs> regarding uh, taking care of our community, taking care of our people. Um, and those are awards that range <coughs> up to $5,000, uh, depending on whether it's a homeowner or a, uh, a renter. Um, we're doing a tremendous amount of work in the library on, on uh, Tonight's uh, agenda, you'll see uh, awarding some contracts. Um, the one is for the, uh, the the front steps that have to get redone, uh, and also the elevator that was knocked out during the storm. Um, so hopefully those should be up and, and, uh, and done within two months' time. About the elevator has some long lead items, so we are struggling to get that to rein that in and make it closer to focus. Okay. Uh, also, our 13th Avenue Water Project is more or less done. Almost done. We still have to do testing. Testing. Um, <coughs> testing's done. Testing's done. We already started connecting the water taps. 40 people on 500 block, 400 block, We're going 300 block next, and then we'll start on the sewer system. <coughs> okay. Excellent. Um, I also want to thank uh, our Department of Public Works. Uh, as Council President, like you said, I thought they did an outstanding job with the, uh, the snow. Uh, it's nice to wake up and actually see blacktop. And the reason why that happens is because we got an incredible group of dedicated uh, DPW employees who are out working, plowing snow uh, in some lousy conditions while the rest of us are home comfortable in bed. So please tell the uh, to tell them that we said uh, thank you and congratulations on your job. Lastly, and uh, oh, you know, let me go back real fast to the, uh, to, the to the grants. Uh, the grant money we're, we're distributing. Uh, obviously, we're taking people's personal information, name, address, uh, in including uh, income. Uh, none of that, none of the personal information will be made public. So uh, I know we've had some people who were hesitant to come apply because they were fearful that their information would be made public. Um, if there's anyone here or anyone you know, tell them do not be fearful that we will not make it public no matter how many open requests we get from anyone in town. Uh, lastly, and I want to thank uh, and I congratulate uh, Councilwoman uh, Jennifer Nicolay, who is being honored uh, next Wednesday at the JFK Bauer Award. <laughs> Along with uh, four other people, uh, and uh, they, they're all women, uh, which is, uh, makes sense. 
and uh, she's being honored for her tremendous work uh, uh, with the volunteers at Hurricane Sandy. So congratulations, uh, Councilman. Thank you. That's all for me. So let's get to public session on the resolution calendar. Any comments, questions? This is just on the resolution calendar. See, I'm not make a motion to close the public Whoa. 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 It's kind of a mess down there. First of all, DPW guys are awesome. Um, even before the storm, yeah. you were always phone call, cleaned up everything. Can't say enough about them. And Mayor, just one comment, then I have two quick questions to you on resolution one. About tonight, you did an awesome job helping to get this town back. I mean, it was a mess. It's still, my end of town is still blighted. Um, but please, we elected all of you, and we can also take you out of office. It is unbecoming of the dignity of your office mm -hmm. when somebody questions you to get snide remarks, lousy looks. Please don't do that. Just answer the question, okay? It's just our right to ask. Okay, resolution on the back. Second one, um, where it's designating all real uh, property within the borough. Um, does this mean that when you replace the, the pavilions and whatever, you can do like what you did on Ninth Avenue Pier, like just have somebody come in and build the building? Because three million dollars for a building and then rent it for thirty thousand dollars is not good business. But could you do that? And if you did, would there be liquor up there? Which was which uh, Second on the back of the page. Um. Rehabilitation uh, resolution for re uh, designating all the real property within the borough. Yeah, no, that has nothing to do with the. Uh, okay, but that is a question I have, so you can take that. And the other one I have, when you're going out for awarding contracts for the rental of five kitchen food concession trailers uh, on the, uh, which I'm assuming is on the ocean, uh, ocean front. Yeah, they're going to be, uh, the, the food concession uh, trailers are just temporary for the summer. Right. Uh, we'll Who's going, and, and my question is, uh, we'll Zildoar for bid? next summer. Oh, for next summer. But my question is, rather than put <coughs> trailers up there for the summer, because you got to know how pretty it is looking at the ocean with anything on it, and those people who are on the ocean front must really enjoy it, too. Um, can we help the businesses downtown? Mm -hmm. Because... How about giving them a chance? This is an opportunity. We don't have buildings up there. And most people do bring their lunch to the beach. Uh, most families have coolers and whatever. Why not promote <coughs> Main Street? They need help. Like the other, like LBI and a couple of the other beach runs, they promote Main Street. We can't, our Main Street needs a boost. This is a wonderful opportunity to help them. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Any other questions, comments on the resolution calendar? Uh, yes, yes, sir. On the resolution calendar. Charles Bolt, 1501 Ocean Avenue. Peter Pyro, Pyro. Who is he? He's our animal house hearing officer, correct? The borough advocate. The borough advocate? Right. Yep. Say yes? He was here last year as well, yeah. Uh, but I mean, what what is his title? His title. As a borough advocate, borough what does he do? Advocate. What does he do? He. Prosecutors. He acts as the prosecutor type for, for Animal House hearings. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Ted Eamon, Oakwood Road, Belmar. Um, I would just like to ask the council people here uh, just to give me a quick synopsis of this has to do with the resolution designating Belmar, the entire town of Belmar, uh, for rehabilitation. What, what, right now, right before you vote on it, what is your sense of the reason for it? And I'll start with um, Councilwoman uh, Nicolay. Yeah, why, why are we doing that? Just, just to get a sense of your understanding of it, why are we doing that right now? And that, 
discussed this. No, no, I'm not. We discussed it in the past. It Ma Mayor, I'm us, asking sir. Councilwoman Nicolay. Uh, sir, I'm going to speak. It allows us as a, as a town to put in place a tax abatement system. Uh, that Mayor, I'm, really, this is my time. And you're, you're quoted in the paper, so I know exactly where you feel, what you feel, and why you're doing it. No, but I mean, there are other people going to vote on it. And, and I have, in, in all respect, I mean, I was here on the 16th, and for instance, Councilwoman Nicolay, you've never met, made a, a question, or, and I had no idea. So I, I really do wanted to ask you firsthand before you vote on it. Never had a question about it. I'm so sorry. On the 16th, you didn't say anything about it, you know, because we have the videotape, so I watched. What is it that you wanted me to say? I didn't want you to say anything, but you, I have heard no comment from you on this. And what did you want me to comment? I'm not... You just did. Right. Right. I just simply wanted you to, to give me a sense of the reason why we're doing it. Period. Because you're going to vote on it. That's all. Okay. Very simple. All right. Um, um, President Nike, again, what is, I'm sorry, what is your take on why we're doing it? Uh, my take is that it would assist residents who are uh, very heavily impacted by the storm to have tax abatements with regard to improving their property. Okay, got it. Thank you. And um, Councilman McGovern. I find it's going to encourage the property owners to uh, rebuild their homes or improve their homes and at the same time save their, themselves money on the uh, tax assessment on their property, which I'm sure as a property <coughs> owner in town, anything I can do to save money is good. And it's all soft. It's all good. You have a question? Yeah. The five years that these people are going to be saving on the, the taxes, I think will encourage them to not only rebuild what was damaged, but improve their homes that uh, uh, they were thinking about improving, and therefore it's going to improve the whole town of Belmont. I think it's, I think it's great. Great. All right, so I, I, one, one of the things that... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, Jim. I, I um, as we talked before, this was about really the tax abatement to people whose houses were destroyed and <coughs> forced to rebuild. No way around it. This was going to help them, um, so they don't get hit up front with the huge tax increase. It's going to be a five-year increment, and to go yes, I, I printed it out and I did look it look it over as you email me to do. So I am a little bit familiar with it. So. Okay. So repairs are not involved in this at all? Jennifer, do you are repairs involved in this? Can you get a can you get a tax abatement for having repairs done? Yes. You can. No, I <laughs> You're on record, so and I have the attorney from the planning board meeting saying this is why this is where the confusion is, Mayor. No, there is confusion. On on the videotape from the January 16th meeting, William Nor Norgrave was here. Right. I don't know him personally, so it's William Norgrave, the attorney, who's your redevelopment attorney. Right. And there's a conversation between Councilman McGovern and, and, and a really good question is from you, Brian, about, you know, like, well, if I repair my roof, will that count? And we took the, the subject that repairs came up. Can I fix my siding? And now this is your redevelopment attorney. He said, I can't imagine, and that's a quote, I cannot imagine that repairs would qualify for a tax abatement. That's on tape. I didn't make him say that. He's a redevelopment attorney. I, I figure he knows what he's talking about. Can I add to that? What I think probably what he was thinking, because I'm going to have my roof redone. It's an old roof. But probably I'm going to do some things other than just replacing the old roof. So I will, in essence, be repairing and improving. I got so it. Great. That, yeah. that makes sense. That gray area. I understand. But now you were on the planning board meeting too, and I wasn't there, unfortunately. But it's in the it's in the co-star, and that, was it an attorney? Another attorney? Uh, was it Mr. Young? Who was the attorney at the planning board meeting? 
Uh, Doug Kovacs. He's the no, no, no. It was somebody else. He was quoted. There was another attorney there from yeah, he, a Somerville yeah. from Somerville firm. I don't, I don't remember his name. Right. Do you know who it was, maybe? You were there. Roberts. I think it's Dave Roberts. Dave. Roberts. Thank you. Yes. Rob, yeah, right. All right. So Dave, Dave Roberts was there, um, and the and it was reported in the paper where somebody said, you know, where he said, you know, uh, siding, roof, new heating system. Okay. Well, what is it? If I put in a new heating system, it's it's really very very simple, very simple. If you do something to your property that's going to increase the assessed value of that property. The additional taxes you would pay for that increased assessment would be abated over five years. No, I understand that. It doesn't seem like it. Well, well, I don't get, see, there, there's things like repairs, there's things like general maintenance and repairs that I don't, I don't get. I don't get that, and I, and I, I really, you, you know. What general Oh, yeah, I do, but not in terms of tax abatements. You know, the public law mayor, the start, it started way back, and that's, I'm going to close with that. The public law in, in the 80s, and I'm old enough to remember this. You were in high school, maybe, 80s? Grammar school. In the 80s, they gave tax credits. It was before abatements. And then it went into the states, and they did that for historic preservation reasons. The whole thing starts with public laws dealing with tax credits and then abatements to preserve older buildings. And now we've moved into a whole area where we have redevelopment, rehabilitation. Now we have the revised and updated rehabilitation and redevelopment, which is still getting its way through the Supreme Court in New Jersey and getting some very interesting results. But I'm worried about a blanket thing of redevelopment and this, this town doesn't even have any commission for historic preservation. A lot of what we have, it's and I mean, I know that, but it's a re, it's falls under, your rehabilitation falls under a redevelopment entity, or could. I know that. Right, but the resolution will, will lead to an ordinance, and it can lead to zoning. Your friend over at the um, uh, municipality, New Jersey municipality, said that in the paper this morning. My friend? Yeah. Who? Oh, what's his name, Jim? Oh, Jim. Yes. Yeah, he works with, uh, what is Jim's name? Anyway, it was, it was quoted in the article. Did you read the article today in the uh, Asbury Press? Yes, yeah. Oh, the gentleman's name is Bill Dressel. He's no, not name. Bill, the other one, Jim. Jim James, Jim. James something Jr. James Malley, or? I didn't read anyone named James Malley. What was the other one who worked for economic development? Oh, I don't know that Okay. Well, anyway, he, he said that it gives you the, you know, uh, the reign to basically to take existing zoning ordinances and change them. Streamlines that process, and I got that. I got that. What I'm concerned about is that there's nothing in Belmar to preserve our historic buildings. You know, like Brian's house is what 103 years old, right? A little more. A little more, right? And uh, yours is 1920, and Jennifer's, I believe, is 19. Let's see, 31, 32, and yours is 31. There are other buildings. My house is built. <laughs> it's online, Mayor. My house was built in 1905. It's online. It's just, there's a graph under yours which shows how, how much your property has depreciated in the last five years. It's on there. I know, I just Don't you know. love technology? You know, so I'm looking into this. <laughs> Many years ago. All right, but I, I, my last thing is that before we designate the entire borough in terms of rehabilitation, I'm, I'm hoping, and maybe I'll get a resolution to you soon, that we have a historical <coughs> preservation committee because we're losing a lot of our buildings that make us very interesting in an older, short town, and before long, we won't recognize who we are anymore. Thanks. Okay, uh, yes. To get your argument, you're saying that we, if we pass this, we could 
not preserve our buildings? Like, what do you There's nothing in place to preserve them now. And with this, it makes it even worse. We do have a historical commission. No, that's not the same, though, Claire. It, it, it couldn't be part of that? No, it has, to be, it has to be people who are architecturally aware. For instance... Well, they could bring people in. We, and we should. I mean, we have some, for instance, I don't know if you I'm, I'm, I, I, I created an art department that had an architectural component. It was a public school, but there was art. And they had to study different periods. If you go down uh, 16th, right. and you'll see some places that look very, very quaint. They're art, they're art and craft movement places. I know those places. Right, and they, and they go into uh, um, Glendola. There's a couple re really nice ones. But the one closest to the 16th light there, on 16th, that it's brick with all the terracotta roof and all the mm -hmm. alcoves, that's a classic. We have I mean, Victorian homes, too. And we have, but well, Victorian should be on high on our list. I mean, I used to go to Cape May, not because they were tearing everything down and putting up three-story buildings with restaurants underneath them. I went there because they still have Victorians, big front porches. I'd be interested in... in <laughs> Victorian houses. Oh, they, they should be high, they should be on our endangered list. Have some. I, I know what you're talking about. Um, but if you go into other parts of New Jersey and down the coast, even places now in the, that are, that are, are uh, like the mayor's age, not the 20s are being preserved in Florida, and the 30s are being preserved right now in Florida, because they're not going to be around. Brian now, has some information for you. Back in the early 1990s, I was on the historical council and the county came in to do exactly what you're saying and they did a survey of the different uh, older homes in town and what they found was most of those older homes in town had done improvements to their uh, property like took down the plaster inside walls and put in drywall yeah. um, put in air conditioning other uh, improvements to modernize their home which no longer they did so much to it it no longer qualified so they really came in and did probably i saw about 50 homes that they took photographs of and back then I what, you, what year was that brian in the early 1990s the county did it and they well we we can spearhead you know we're belmar we don't need the county we right. do a lot of yeah. we have great initiative well, but they had the experience they had the better you know the, the people on the, we, well, the historical council really are Interested people. We have, we have, we have, right, exactly. And we have great resources in New Jersey generally, but there's different periods. And if we don't, if we don't say something now, they're not going to be here. Ted, they're not going to be here. I, I still can't make the connect. I, we passed this. We're trying to get tax abatement for five years. People were ruined by the storm. How did we get into? Because future zoning. It gives the it gives the it gives the council, or if we create a redevelopment or rehabilitation entity, it gives them the power to change existing zoning, and an existing zoning is more. Uh, it's the focus is on getting more revenue, tax revenue. It's not present. It's the total opposite of preservation. It's the future and not old parts like me. <laughs> it's like or old buildings like that. And I've lived in two, I mean, the last community I lived in sacrificed its whole future. It was Jamesburg. They sacrificed everything. They butchered their Victorians. They made the town. And then all of a sudden, Monroe built up, and there's all these mod modern retirement communities who were looking for a great little Victorian shopping village, but there wasn't enough to offer because they, they ruined it. They ruined the downtown. It was, there's a, uh, the, the, you know, Lincoln's Carriage was right down the street from where it went. The carriage at Abraham Lincoln Road, right down the street. To, to capture your argument, okay, yeah. I'll make it real simple. Thank you. We're afraid if we pass this, that the rest of it is 50, 60 pages. Right. It has, there's other effects in this besides just the abatements that could happen. Would right. Happen? And we'll like, like it, lower income and middle income housing. If you look at the revised, the revised rehabilitation redevelopment thing, you can include it or not include it. There's no mention of it in this. So I mean, we need to we need to look ahead and say, all right, what, wh who are, why are we doing this, and who's it going to benefit, and what's our, what's our, more feedback from the town, you know? I'm retired. I I'm not. I put thirty three thousand dollars already into the home. I'm not going to put any more right now. 
you know? And I, it's like some of us just want to retire and live here peacefully. We don't need all, all of this other stuff going on. Thank you. Any other questions, comments on the resolution calendar? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Gene Kramer, Fourth Avenue. Can everybody hear me? Now you're going to read something. I'm going to read what's here. Okay. 
the designation of the borough as an area in need of rehabilitation is expected to promote the overall development of the borough. Why do you want to promote the overall development of the borough? Remember that word overall means including everything, total, okay? Don't, don't you look forward to having an area to walk your dog? Overall development means just what this says. Overall. Urbanization, you want to pave over it all. No. Sir, in my opinion, this town is overdeveloped already. I think you're scared of the word improvement. Improvement doesn't mean you're going to take something. Improvement's not we here. Are, the lake is going to be improved. And that truck. No, no, no. We're talking about what's like, in the resolution, Jean, sir. Jean, Jean, you asked me a question, I'm answering. The improvement around Silver Lake, we're going to put that path back, and I can walk my dog on a better path that was there before Sandy. That path was put in probably when, I remember um, Jack Mooney was uh, on the council when that, when that track was put in. And it hasn't been improved since. Now with the storm, we're going to rehabilitate areas in the town and we're going to improve Silver Lake, putting down the path, putting new trees. And you know what? I think that's better. That's my answer. Okay. It's not urbanizing. I can still help my daughter in Lake. Councilwoman Dyke. Yes, Mr. Why do you want to promote the overall development of the borough? Well, I basically agree uh, with Mr. McGovern. Even before he spoke, I had those words in my head. Um, positives that could be born of this are innumerable in terms of rehabilitating parks, rehabilitating areas of town, the rehabilitation, I think the, the main point is rehabilitation after the storm. So, you know, yes, I, I favor it. I, I think it's a good way to go. And um, it will uh, basically improve mm -hmm. and lend to uh, aesthetics that we don't have. Thank you. Uh, Councilman uh, Bean, um, this uh, uh, resolution, is, or I should say the designation uh, of the borough as an area in need of rehabilitation is expected to promote the overall development of the borough. Why do you want to promote the overall development of the borough? This is what I did, Jean. I downloaded this, I went through it, I'm not a lawyer, and I understand why we're trying to do it. We're trying to do it for the tax abatement. This could be Pandora's box, and that's what you're saying. It could, it could open up a lot of things. So what I did was, um, I reached out to um, some of them in rival. Let me read you an email that we had a correspondence with real quick. Um, here, here, here Councilman Bean, under current statutes, Belmore's decision to declare all the properties in Belmore as in need of rehabilitation appears to be the only course of action currently available in order to implement these tax abatements. Please know I would be pleased to work with you and other Belmore officials to craft legislation that would allow Belmore to implement these rebates in a more effective and efficient manner. Sincerely, Dave Rival, Assembly for East District. So basically, I'm not for this. I think there's another way, a better way we could be doing this, working you know, with um, higher ups. So I'm not really for, I'm, I'm not for rehabilitating the entire town, putting the entire town in uh, redevelopment. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jennifer, uh, why do you want to promote the overall development? He just said redevelopment. Are you asking about rehabilitation no. or redevelopment? No, no. This is the, the, the resolution that you're voting on tonight. I'm not sure how you're interpreting when it says overall development. I don't think that means that every inch of the town is going to have buildings, I, I, I did, restaurants. I didn't, I I didn't think, author it. I, I, I interpret the overall development as more the overall improvement of the town. Because I think when you're stating a development, you're saying you're not going to have parks and you're not going to have then areas perhaps. for your children and families to walk. <coughs> I, I'm not agreeing with your interpretation of that. Then perhaps the wording should be changed. It says overall development. And I did look up overall in the dictionary. It means including everything. <laughs> no, I agree with overall. 
I agree. I, I'm yeah. just saying, I, I think your interpretation of development is, again, development, shops, and buildings, and yeah. taking up all the kind of natural areas and building. Mm -hmm. I'm just using the word development. Overall development. That's why uh, the, the, the cities that did this before, Camden, Trenton, Newark, totally urbanized. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, I, that brings to mind what these two gentlemen just talked about. I look at some of these resolutions. Oh, cool. Good evening, everyone, by the way. Uh, 1501 Ocean Avenue. I, I look at some of these resolutions, and I think they're poorly written. And that, in particular, is one that's poorly written. Overall, does mean everything. So, uh, poor choice of words. Uh, you know, I think we should change the wording in a lot of them. And, you know, sometimes I look at them and I say, you know what's going to happen? Down the road, they're going to say, well, you agreed to it. You voted for it. The council voted for it, so we're going to do it. So, I think uh, both of these gentlemen are right about that. I, you know, maybe some change, but what's wrong with Belmont the way it is? Before Hurricane Sandy, it was fine, right? I, you know, I don't think we have to make a lot of change here. You know, we have to put the boardwalk back in. I don't think we have to change the ocean front, <coughs> except for putting playgrounds in. I was glad to see the students come in and get those awards. All that stuff was wonderful. I really appreciate it. Being a former teacher, I enjoyed that. But, you know, I mean, I, you know, like, I'll have more to say in the in the other session, but I think overall is a bad word. You know, some changes have to be made, like Brian said. Yes, that's a good change. You know, you know, building certain walkways for the dogs and things like that. Fine, but not everything. That's what it could be. Thank you. Yeah. Forte, Eighth Avenue and Eighth Street. I think I think the um, I think the I think the issue here is you're missing the point. We have a master plan. We have zoning. Uh, passing this resolution is only designed to help the taxpayer and tax abatement scheme. I don't want to say scheme, but it's it's a way to not have uh, people pay the full rate of taxes on their improvement. There's not going to be. There's no way it, there can be. A change of zoning. The zoning is already set from the master plan that the town approved. And the master plan, is, the, the zoning is derived from the master plan. So to infer that because of this resolution, you're somehow going to develop every square inch of the town is erroneous. It can't happen because you have zoning laws which are made from the master plan, which is what they're empowered to do. So I just want to make that clear. Oh, we can change the wording. Sir, any other questions, comments on the resolution calendars? Seeing none, I'll make a motion for the public portion. Second. <coughs> All right, uh, I'm abstaining from the first resolution. Do you have a motion to approve the payment of the So moved. Second. Second. Yes. I don't even know why we vote. Some of these checks are already cut. They're already paid. Um, you know what? I'm not voting on things that I have no decision making on. So I'm abstaining. Councilman Nicholas? Yes. And I abstain. Um, next is the consent agenda. Um, can I ask a question with me? Do you want to move that one resolution on the consent agenda? You're going to vote no on it? Is that correct? Which one? What? 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 That's on the. Uh, it's on the agenda. You want to move off? Hold on. Um, yes, please. And oh, I, I, I do have a question on the resolution providing for emergency temporary appropriations resolution. Just before we do that, let's move this off. Okay. You want to make a motion? Uh, I'd like to make a motion. Make a motion. Uh, to <laughs> move that resolution off the consent by re uh, resolution by consent. I'll second. Yes. Um, I, I think there's a better way to do this, um, giving tax abatements, which I'm all for. I don't think we need to pass the entire 80-page law to do that. So I'm voting no. This is just to remove the 
Yes. 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 Uh, next is first reading introduction, ordinance 2012 13, ordinance amending supplementary chapter 35, uh, flood damage prevention of the revised general ordinances of the borough of Delmar. Uh, Colleen, you want to explain this to the council if you do first reading introduction? Certainly. This is um, something that's not <coughs> unanticipated. We had a presentation uh, with two meetings ago from our flood plan administrator, Bob Florence, and Ted Bianchi about the advisory based flood elevation maps that have been released from FEMA. Uh, the state of, since that meeting, the state of New Jersey has actually moved to adopt the ordinances themselves, with this floodplain map themselves, um, which was a, a great move from Governor Christie's uh, standpoint because it really helped to facilitate the adoption around the state. We are still moving at the, at the request of our floodplain administrator to adopt these ordinances ourselves here at the borough. The main reason for that <coughs> is that by this adoption, we will gain points in our emergency preparedness um, response with FEMA. This ultimately will allow for greater discounts on flood insurance to be obtained by our residents because we have adopted into ordinance the recognition of these uh, advisory-based flood elevations. So again, something that happened on the state level already, these, ordin these, these maps are in effect. These are moving forward towards adoption. Uh, what we are encouraging council, council to consider the adoption into ordinance here at the borough, again, as the main priority to help residents gain Discounts on flood insurance. All right, I'll uh, uh, offer and uh, move for its adoption for the uh, first reading introduction in accordance 2013-3. Second. Yes. 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 Um, is there anybody I can come to your office and have them better explain it to me? Absolutely. Uh, before the second reading? Sure. Because you know, I got some questions. Uh, I'll say yes for tonight for the first reading. Yes. Councilor Dean? And this is for flood, at least the flood maps, basically? Yeah, the, re the revised flood elevation. And they're approved by the Christie to be sent off for them and everybody. Oh, this, yeah. this is all. Okay. Uh, yes. Councilman Nicholas? This, once it is adopted, it's recognized by insurance companies. Yes. Is that how the discount works? Yes. Mayor Dowdy? Yes. Uh, yes. <coughs> uh, next reading, uh, next is first reading introduction, or is 2013 4, ordinance amending and supplementing chapter 40. Uh, development regulations and revised general ordinances of the borough of Belmar to allow height limitations conforming to base flood elevations. Uh, what this ordinance does is simply um, permit um, property owners that are in these flooded flood areas, uh, these new flood areas, to increase the height of their home, putting it on stilts or, or uh, pilings, um, and not have to go before the zoning board for a variance in, on the height. So um, you know, if, if the height in town is 35 feet, and you have to go up 4 feet, you're going to go down 39 feet. Um, so uh, it only makes sense that we wouldn't force people to go before the zoning board uh, to comply with the maps that were in ordinance 2013-03. So this just makes it easier for people to make those improvements. Uh, <coughs> so I'll offer an initial adoption. Second. Councilman Yes. Councilman Again, I've got questions. Are there different areas in town that must raise it higher than other levels? Yes. Yeah. So we could have this up, down, up, down type thing based on the FEMA's maps, right? Yes. Correct. The biggest concern is what's called the velocity zone. And that um, only really applies to <coughs> properties from 19, the houses 19th Avenue South, I think. Maybe part of 8, or 18th Avenue South that face Ocean Avenue because they're in a, a velocity zone, which means, and by, by the way, this is all done before Sandy, which means that they uh, face uh, waves of up to three feet hitting their property. So, uh, you know, unless they're gonna pay astronomical flood insurance, they're pretty much all gonna have to elevate. So someone, let's say, three blocks down on C Street and 14th Avenue, they wouldn't be able to raise their house because they're in a different zone? No, in that case, if they wanted to, they would have to go before the, plant, the zoning board to get a variance. 
Right. So this is only for people that are being compelled by the Google Maps to, right. to raise pounds. We did not want them to feel compressed against our existing ordinance right. on, on height because of them complying with FEMA. So if we have House A and House C mm -hmm. raised and House B in the middle doesn't want to, uh, they can't, let's say, sue the people on the side of them for taking away their view, mm -hmm. so to speak. Mm -hmm. okay. I'll say yes. Councilman Yes. Councilman Yes. 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 And that closes our ordinance part. Now the ever popular, always <laughs> entertaining, <laughs> never quite know what to expect. Public session. Public session is very simple. You raise your hand, wait to be called on. You will have five minutes up at the microphone, state, state your name and address for the record. And then you have five minutes to talk about whatever you like. Uh, if you speak. Whatever you like, you know. <laughs> if you speak while someone else is speaking, you will forfeit your turn to speak. So please do not be rude to the person who's at the microphone when you're there. Um, everyone has an opportunity. Uh, All right. Who would like to go first in our public session? Yes. Hi, Andrea Gangusa, 14th Avenue. And see, you couldn't even call me by name because you don't know me because I haven't lived here this long, so. I'm not like everybody else in town where everybody knows each other's names. Did um, we honor your daughter at some point? You did, yeah, yeah she, she raised money for, I can't for the second that. hold on benefit when all the kids were committing suicide That's in right. yeah. high school. Oh, she raised $40,000 yes, for the that. second yeah. one. Um, I have a concern about the boardwalk. We moved here because we love the beach and we love the ocean and we love the views that it affords us. Um, it's unfortunate that those beautiful old ladies that were on the boardwalk had to come down in the storm, but now that they're down, I think that we really need to discuss it more as a town as to whether or not we want them rebuilt. And I'll come and I'll say this at every single meeting because it seems like it's a fait accompli. I understand we need a pavilion like the Fifth Avenue Pavilion for our residents and for our seniors, and I think that's wonderful. I'm glad you're rebuilding the library, which I think you had wanted to close at one point for our seniors. That's wonderful. Um, I don't think we should just assume that we should rebuild on the boardwalk without hearing from the people who live in town mm -hmm. as to whether I'm, Ms. Wom, Ms. Wom, Patty Wom said the same thing. We have the west side of the street. There's lots of businesses there. There's lots of food places there for people who come to town to eat. We should try to reestablish Main Street as a place for people to go and for people to spend money. Why are we running to hire architects to put up buildings that we don't necessarily need. Why not leave our boardwalk pristine and our beach beautiful and encourage people to spend money and build up our downtown <coughs> area? Um, well, we do have a public process for it. Uh, Council of the Governors actually has a meeting tomorrow night as well. Uh, but the third Thursday of every month, uh, he has a meeting uh, with a group of uh, residents in town, uh, much like yourself, uh, to decide what to do with the boardwalk. Um, my personal feeling is we should rebuild it. Uh, I think the general consensus in town, the feeling I get from talking to people, is that we should rebuild. Um, so I understand <coughs> you think differently, and, and I'm glad you came up and expressed your opinion. Uh, and if you'd like to take an interest in their, in their meetings, you can please Oh, go yeah, I will, but I, I'm curious comment, as to but, why you think we should rebuild. What will it bring, like Patty Wan said, to build these expensive, enormously expensive buildings that we rent out for thirty or forty thousand dollars for a season, we won't make that money back just for, for building an upkeep alone. We'll um, never make that money we'll, back. We'll, we'll who are we satisfying? The people who live in town or the people who are visiting town? Uh, well, uh, I guess in this case we try to satisfy both. Um, but the economics uh, is, right. is, is, is inaccurate. So, for instance, uh, Burrito Hut. Remember Burrito Hut? They were at the Tenth Avenue. That one store paid forty-two thousand dollars a year in rent. So to say that we're renting a whole pavilion for thirty thousand is not. No, I didn't mean a whole pavilion. I meant even the stores themselves. You have. I know, but they add up. 
you get 30,000, 40,000, 30,000. Right. Um, believe me, we are gonna take a hit from the loss of income uh, in those pavilions, absolutely. Um, we could take the hit for one year. Do we wanna take that hit for every year I'm going? I don't think so. Um, I, I don't think that'd be financially a good idea. But I, I, the, the consensus I hear in town is people do want to rebuild. I understand that you're concerned, I understand you don't want to, or you don't think we should, except for certain areas. But, um, and again, you can express your opinion to that committee as well. But we are gonna have a public process with this, where the public will have input, um, and <coughs> express your opinion. <coughs> my opinion that we, that we should be building, I, I believe that's the general consensus in town as well. Okay. Can I just say, um, I think you mentioned that to me about two weeks ago when we had the meeting outside. And I was really surprised. I never thought of not rebuilding those buildings. But as I said, I grew up here my whole life. Um, and there's always been buildings there. Um, there's only four in the 20 blocks. So it's not like we're putting one everywhere. But I did ask around, because I know a lot of people in town. A lot of people that go to the beach. A lot of people, uh, you know, just that don't live on the ocean front. I said, what do you think about not rebuilding the buildings? And you know, sure, there was one or two, but by far the majority of the people in Belmar that I've known for a long, long time want those buildings rebuilt. Uh, but I understand that there's uh, people out there. I mean, and I appreciate you coming to the public meeting and oh, expressing that. Oh, I'll come that. to your meetings too, but for example, the 13th Avenue Pavilion blocks the view from everybody. I'm so sorry about that. Any other public comment, questions? Three. Three. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maria Florio, 112th Avenue. Um, thank God I was not in need of any gift cards. Thank God for that. Uh, can you just explain to me why do rentals get gift cards? You um, said rentals and landlords? Did I hear right? Mm -hmm. no. the grant program. Gift cards or a grant program? The grant program is, is we discussed it, tonight? Mm -hmm. Rentals that is $2,000, homeowners $5,000? Right, right. Okay. Yeah, sure. So uh, homeowners would be up to $5,000 and uh, uh, renters uh, would be up to $2,000. Why renters? Don't the uh, landlord take care of the uh, their property or what? I mean, whatever they're doing. I don't understand. I just want to know. Oh, yeah, but they're displaced just like the homeowner was, so why wouldn't we take care of them? The residents in this town like anyone else? Oh, it's, they're getting, because they were uh, displaced. Sure. Oh, okay, thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Gene Murray. I'm, uh, I live in a senior building, and uh, I haven't been out of meetings in, in a while, but my health hasn't been very good. Uh, and on behalf of the seniors, uh, uh, Mayor, I would like to thank you for all you've done for us during Sandy uh, with the gift cards and coming over there the night of the fire and uh, over to the over the gym when they took us over there by bus. It was... Uh, you know, you were very concerned about us, and all of us could feel that, and we really appreciate it. And getting back to the, oh, to the gift cards, everybody used them, and they told me to thank you very much. And uh, that young lady who said uh, about you making faces and eyes and all that when I asked the question, well, me as an individual, I don't blame you. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it. doing what you think is right and you're doing a great job and everybody who I talk to in town tell me what a great job you're doing. Who gave away gift cards? Or who you got gift cards when you came to your building? Yeah, Kelly. Kelly did gave them away? Yeah. Very nice. Okay. It was very nice. Uh, and uh, why is there no, I, what is what, it? Oh. you know like any time a municipality gives gives gift cards away, 
had a lot of accountability there. That's all. Oh, yeah, well, uh, well they were used well, and, uh, and we appreciate it. And uh, and all you're doing for the time is to make don't give up. You know, <coughs> you hang in there. I'll make it as brief as possible. I had emailed you, Mayor Doherty, on Monday, and you acknowledge that you received my email, so thank you for that. My interest is very broad. I want to bring traveling wings to the Jersey Shore. Uh, it's a playground apparatus, so it sounds a little whimsical, um, but I think, um, like I said, the hurricane has made this um, little initiative of mine a little bit more relevant, and um, I don't know if there's a need or if it's appropriate for Belmar, necessarily, but I know that people in this room are really committed to their community and to Monmouth County. So if there's a need in another community or another town, I just want to be a part of that conversation. Um, I, I will give you a copy of the printed presentation. Um, I, I know I, there's already um, playground equipment that was likely purchased, and there are a lot of needs that need to be met. Um, people are living in hotels and, and in trailers. so. If funding is an issue, that's something that I'm committed to helping out with as well. Um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm very familiar with this apparatus, and I know how much it costs, and I know what it takes to build it. So, um, you know, I just want to be part of this this conversation. So, thank you for. And I will tell you that our business administrator did show me on uh, YouTube uh, people using these uh, these rings, well, and, and they are very very cool. It's a great concept. Well, it's just nice enough that people are actually willing to listen. I mean, Dina Long of Seabright actually thanked me and putting me in communication with people. So I said, I know it's a little whimsical, but I think it can actually bring value, and I think there's a place for them. So I'm going to just try to start working with um, people in, in the public. To okay. And we have all your information, so. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, your name is Samantha Cerrone. Um, I'm actually from Okay. So they, they are, well, thank you for letting me speak here tonight. So. Oh, and you were swinging on the rings and the, the guy. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the, test ones, the test one's in my office. <laughs> yes, Sam. Sam K, 414 Seventh Avenue. <clears throat> May I want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to get some of that grant money being a flood victim, and I know I've spent almost over $50,000 and I'm still not in my house, and if I'm lucky enough to get some of that money, I really don't care who signs the check. Charles <laughs> 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 1501 Ocean Avenue. You know, I enjoyed the folly early on, especially with uh, Councilman Dean, uh, you know, it brings up, once again, transparency and telling the truth and somebody who knows the truth and then has to tell the truth only because everybody else knows it. That's like lying. So that bothers me, you know. And so I enjoyed what he said, you know what I mean? Because I feel that, you know, this whole idea of approving contracts and then signing afterwards and I think there was a no-bid process in the beginning that bothered me too. You know, um, the best person gets the job. And getting back to somebody who left the last council meeting, it was a folly also, and a gentleman came up here and he said that he sifted the sand over in Madison for less than a quarter of a million dollars, yet we paid close to $1.5 million. So, uh, and it was roughly the same amount of cubic yards of sand. So I, I had a problem with that, you know. That's a 600% increase. Where'd all that other money go? That's one quarter million dollars. I mean, I, you know, that's taxpayers' money. Even though we're not paying it. Well, indirectly, we are paying it. Because we have to file income tax returns pretty soon. So we are paying for that. So you might say, we're not paying. Yes, we are. We've, well, everybody in here, I assume, fi you know, files a federal return. I do. You know, uh, every year, and usually have to pay money every year, even though I'm retired. So I don't have a problem with that. Uh, you know, I, I have a problem with the truth. I want the truth. Even if I disagree with you, at least I'll be happy that you told me the truth. But you, 
You were transparent in the beginning, but only because all these people said all these things, and I bothered. I don't like liars. I just don't like it. I can't stand it. And ACLU had an article in the press about, uh, it happened to Monmouth in Ocean County. They were talking about law enforcement. They were talking about, they said they're not very transparent. They ask them questions, and they don't tell the truth. Yeah, I wonder how they feel about us. So, uh, I'll come back. I've got a few more things to say, but I think my five minutes is almost up, right? No, you've got another um, two minutes and 40 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the other thing I noticed is a lot of pilings being built up on the boardwalk between 15th and 16th, well, 16th and 17th Avenue, and it looks like a lot of structures are coming up there, and I'm in agreement with Andrea. I think we want to, you know, Belmont was one of the test, 10 best beaches, I believe, in New Jersey. They're holding, me, uh, who knows, we might have been number three or four or two or one. But the point is, uh, we want to stay that way because all these pilings take away from beach access. They take away from people going to the beach. That's revenues right there. And then we consider the parking problem and all that. I know, uh, my brother lives in Spring Lake. When I used to live in Avon, it used to take me a half hour to go from Avon to Spring Lake through all the traffic in the summertime. And parking car is, forget it. I live in the ocean front. I got one parking spot. But if I don't park, if I don't park late at night or something like that to get another car out there, I have to park down by the railroad station. So yeah, I think parking is a key thing. And, and I, you know, there's a couple other things I've got to say, but I'm, I'm probably out of time right now. Well, <laughs> Maybe I'd wait for my second chance, but, take yeah, yeah. <laughs> but transparency is the key. I, you know, I was very happy to see Councilman Dean come out and make, make those statements. You know, I'm a, the question is, a lot of people are afraid to be profiled. So am I. I'm afraid to be profiled, too. I want the truth. You know, I want the truth. I don't want to pack a lot. I don't want somebody to tell me the truth. Even if I am profiled. Sometimes I think I am profiled. All right, thank you. I'll be back. <laughs> All right, uh, and just uh, here on uh, the Sand City and Manasquan, um, I believe they started this week. They're hoping to be done uh, tomorrow. They start tomorrow. They start tomorrow. They hope to be done sometime in April. Uh, if we'd have done the similar thing, our boardwalk wouldn't have been started until April. They never would have finished in time for right. heck for for Fourth of July. So uh, we actually made the right call when it came to uh, sifting that sand. Any uh, yeah, Tom. Good evening. My name is Tom Rogers, Clayton Drive, Wall Township. I know you, most of you know I own and operate a business on Ocean Avenue. I was curious, I know tonight you, uh, concerning the trailer issue, uh, I've been told that two leases have been turned in. Correct. So they're going to come back up for bid. Hopefully. Correct, yeah. Okay. The trailers, I've done a little homework and I, uh, on the internet and I'm seeing that they're very, very expensive to lease. And I'm sure you've seen that number. How are you going to base the rents on a tenant for next year? In other words, if I was to go out and maybe possibly bid on one of the... Uh, That's tough, because we're only going to do it, you don't do it on one year. <clears throat> right, and being a business person, being there for 17 years, I know about what we're going to be in gross. I know what the rents were on those facilities. You can't charge that kind of rent going into a trailer that's 24 foot by 8 foot wide, just Facility wise, again, this is my 47th year in restaurants, I happen to know a little bit about it. You're not going to be able to do the volume because it's just facilities. You're working laterally instead of circling. You only have three to five crew members versus having 12. You're not going to have storage capacity. It sounds like the town's going to take a big hit this year on rent. Am I wrong or? Uh, well, um, we're taking a big hit because the pavilions aren't there. So what we're trying to do is to get trailers up there. Um, you know, we're not going to make much money on them. It's really to keep those businesses uh, operating for the summer. I understand. So that they can get some revenue um, with the idea that next year, by hopefully by Memorial Day weekend of next year, uh, the buildings that were there uh, would be rebuilt. But uh, for this year, you're right. It's it's it, it's uh, we're not going to make a lot of money. It's really there for those businesses. Are you going to lose money? No. no. So what, I guess, again, the question is, have you come up with what the rent is going to be for next season for one trailer? You mean for this season? For this season coming up. There's going to be a trailer 
let's say the, the correct me if I'm wrong, the burrito place turned or leasing, correct? So there's going to be a trailer there. What is the rent going to be? Have you decided yet? Decide that with a minimum bid. You haven't come up with a minimum bid yet. <coughs> okay. And if I could, could I offer, um, you know, FEMA, and it's something that we're going to go after incredibly uh, aggressively. Um, acknowledges that when you lose a structure, you may need to have a temporary structure in its place. It could be restrooms, it could be trailers, it could be concessions. So they <coughs> recognize that. And there, there is assistance available through FEMA to help subsidize the cost of those jobs. Being as an operator, just knowing that business, you're probably looking at it maybe a 20 to 30 percent of the volume that the business would have done because now again they're working out of a trailer. And I just want you to understand that. So when you place them in a bid, you can't go out and say, listen, we need $30,000 in rent. The guy can't make it. Right. He can't work the whole season and walk away with five grand. No, I understand. I, I will tell you, though, and I, and I think this is pretty encouraging, I think the patch put it up today, and I've already started emails from, from folks, particularly folks that operate a place in, uh, on the boardwalk in Asbury. So people are very, very interested in doing it. Uh, I think we'll see a decent amount of demand. No, it's a great idea. I'm just, again, from a business point of view, just trying to get an idea of what rents. And I just want you to counsel, because you guys aren't operators. You don't know the restaurant business. Knowing in that facility that operator is going to do 20 to 30 percent of what he probably would have done if he had a full-service business that he had in the past. And I'm just, just telling you as a professional, that's what you're looking at. So the, the person who's going to lease it, you have to take that right in consideration. All right, thank you very much. Yes, Janice. Good evening. Janice Kim, Blackburn, River Court. I think in, uh, basically, I'll say the 1st of November, our town was in an emergency situation. And from November 1st to Memorial Day is a short seven months. Sounds like a long time but it really, really isn't when you have the amount of work that we needed to do. I think this town did an incredible job. You made quick decisions that you had to make. There are other towns that certainly have not. And just to give you a little bit of a story also, all of you know that I'm an airline pilot. By law, when a decision is made in an airplane, the dispatcher and the captain have to make that decision together. Well, during my career, there have been a couple of times when I was in almost emergency situations where an airport would close and I didn't really have the time to talk to dispatch. If I had worried about going through dispatch, I would have run out of fuel and put the airplane down anywhere. You guys were in that same emergency situation and you guys did an incredible job. I personally would like to thank you and say thank you. I just wanted to thank everybody that uh, supported me on being Citizen of the Year. It will not go to my head. I'll work harder. I will volunteer more, donate more. I love my job. I love my bosses. I love my town. And those kids today, they were awesome. They were awesome. David Edelman, uh, 13th NB. Um, first, I would like to remind everybody here that this crisis is over. And I think we should get back to a normal operation where things are really understood before they're done. Uh, this rehabilitation thing that you agreed to, how many, you said it was 80 pages long, I think? Uh, let me count it, hold on, let's tell the size. You don't have to. <laughs> Whatever it is, my point is, if each and every, and I'm not going to ask you, but if each and every one of you did not thoroughly read the entire thing and think of the ramifications 
I think it is unconscionable. Um, you people are here now. You have confidence in yourself that you can do the right thing for Belmore. You're not going to be here all the time. You're not going to be here forever. And I really think this is like um, Pelosi with the health care bill. You know, well, we're going to have to pass it to know what's in it. Well, this country's finding out what's in it. Okay, next. Uh, the pavilions <coughs> on the boardwalk. First, I live on 13th. I'm thrilled. I am thrilled that Matisse is gone. They were not a good tenant. Uh, the building looked I mean, light bulbs out. It was unseemly looking. Plus, you live at the shore for the view, and it wasn't there. I think before you decide to build anything, you should consider what your building will do to lowering property values. Now, between 12th and 14th, there are a lot of houses that were built that can't be sold. There are a lot of lots, little 40, 50 foot wide lots. You're talking over $20,000 of real estate taxes that you would be getting if those buildings weren't, weren't there. And you're talking about the real estate values going up all the streets and the entire town. Um, I also think it would just be unconscionable to just take a random sample. Uh, who are you asking? The, um, the tenants that are going to go into the pavilions? I don't know. I talk to a lot of, re a lot of residents. <laughs> And I do not see that the residents want these buildings. And I think for a goal, and I'm really saying this in all due respect, I think what you people should do is you should think of Belmar that when somebody asks you where you live, you do not have to say, I live in Belmar, but on the North End, because there's a whole town, and I really think um, you're isolating one part of the community from the other. It will do everybody good if the entire town is elevated, and I don't see you people doing it. I don't see, I don't see the will for it. Thank okay. you. Bill Young, 303 Ninth Avenue, also representing Dolores Young, 1702 A Street. Uh, Mayor and most of the council, I just want to say uh, that's a great resolution tonight about the rehabilitation. And I want to thank you for taking the action to improve my town, because that's what that's going to do. And uh, on the boardwalk and the beachfront, thank you for making that, the efforts with the borough administrator and everybody else involved, your engineering firm, to make that a better place than it was before. And I, I heard somebody talk about the library, and you wanted to close the library now, and something about the seniors. I, I never heard that. I'm on, the, I'm on the library board. I only see improvements at the library. And uh, the gift card program and the grant program, no taxpayer money, right? No. Right? So, you know, you're definitely a friend of the working man and the working woman, touche to that. And uh, please keep up the good work. But I do have one question. Somebody's always filming. Where, where's that go? YouTube? Uh, no, it goes on to a... Uh, uh Can you ask the, is that legal? Uh, yes. Yes, it is. Okay, all right. Really legal. But thank you for pointing out. So just if anyone does come up, just know that you're going to go on someone's website somewhere. So. Right wing website. Yeah, Roger that. Thank you. What's that? It's called right wing website? Yes, sir. Sorry. Is that what it's called? Mr. Tom. He knows what it is. Uh, Ernest Liberto, 8th Street in Belmont. I, uh, excuse me, I, I 
I was going to sit quietly and listen, but I uh, have to say I, I enjoyed the uh, the uh, transparency, which is really at this microphone. So if uh, there's ever a question about people speaking their mind and getting comments, uh, certainly it's not stopped at, at this point. Uh, and I appreciate the political process. Um, I, I've been in town but quietly for, for, for years. My um, uh, well, to, to put some date on it, uh, we're still maintaining my grandfather's fig tree in the backyard. <laughs> so uh, we've been around, just not active. So I'd like to uh, activate myself a little bit more in the community. I, I, I certainly love this area, and uh, our families and children have been coming down for many, many years. We have many friends in the surrounding uh, county, so we're friends. Um, I also wanted to just say that uh, uh, throughout the entire uh, waterfront communities, whether it's up in the New York metropolitan area or, or along the uh, ocean fronts here in, uh, in South in the uh, in, in along New Jersey uh, waterfront, um, there's activation. There's, there's a positive theme uh, taking place. Um, uh, they've stopped the competition with, with the best beaches in the, in, in the area, you know, and they've said, let's just. You know, you get, get unified. Let's just you know try to cooperate with each other and make things a little bit better. And uh, I'm here to say that um, I've been in touch with uh, Councilwoman Nicolay a little bit uh, uh, um, by forwarding some information I thought might be helpful uh, to do with my small part in, in, in recognizing the beauty of the of the community. And uh, in that regard, I'd like to have some, you know, some input and some instruction, basically from the from the boards. I think that you know should be creating policy. Uh, to you know, help direct people like myself uh, who are new in the community from an activation standpoint and, and, and bring a positive light as I hopefully can. Um, one, one item is a, uh, is a, a sculptor uh, uh, from the New York metropolitan area who has uh, created a beautiful, as far as I'm concerned, book called the Wave Sculptor, um, Sculpture. And she has uh, an exhibit here in Riverside Park in New York City in June. I'd like to invite the representatives from the community that would like to see that and attend it, see whether or not we can also contribute, donate, provide a showcase or, or something in, of that nature to the Arts Council, whatever the proper form is in order to highlight uh, that positive expression of, of, of the oceanfront and the waterfront. Um, there's a lot of positive things going on throughout the country, and, and, and I think Belmont is certainly uh, uh, an example of you know, what can be the future because of, first of all, the activity that's taken place and the efficiency and the expeditiousness of it. You, know, you guys moved very quickly when the, when the uh, disaster struck. And it doesn't happen without that kind of de decision making. So I certainly want to commend the mayor certainly and, and everybody who's involved in that decision making process. Because without that, the money, the resources, the effort, and the energy, and the combined effort would never take place. And that's where you've created the leadership and I, and I want to thank you for that. Uh, secondly, <clears throat> If there's a first aid squad, I believe, or some other type of uh, organization in town, it's a bona fide 501c3, whatever, whatever that mechanism is, because I know Councilman uh, being, you, you, you know, you're, you're, you're key on that. I, I feel that from, the, from what I've heard this evening. So whatever the process is, which I'm, again, a layman, to better <coughs> strengthen those departments, I certainly want to help in some way, shape, or form in order to be a part of that uh, community effort. And that's really basically what I have to say. I want to commend you and thank you again for all the... Uh, the attention that you've given this disaster and the positive spirit you created. Thank you very much. If I could just add, um, Sam actually had the communication. Um, he's just been doing anything and everything to help the community. He's got um, a home that he's uh, <coughs> fixed, you know, after the storm that he can rent down and help somebody. Um, he has postcards that he's been wanting to sell through the first day to raise money for them. Or give um, to them. You don't want to sell it. Let them sell it. Don't <laughs> raise money for right. them. Um, and the sculptor that made the wave, uh, it's this gorgeous sculpture of, of metal in the form yes. of various waves on top of each other, and it's stunning. Um, you know, certainly if there's a fundraiser somewhere, that would be a great piece to display during that. Um, but I, I do want to commend you on all your efforts. Yeah, we just want to contribute to donations. We're not looking for any dollars. No, you know, we don't have that kind of conflict. Uh, you know, because I know it gets a little cloudy. Whatever organizations are responsible for accepting a piece that can be displayed, not for promotional purposes, just to enhance whatever kind of event or function you're having in the community. Thank you. Oh, hang on. All right. Here we go. Back to the back. <laughs> we're trying to hold I know, I know. David Schnack, 302, excuse me. Your uh, stopwatch is calibrated. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, the 
division of youth and weights and measures, or I guess certification for that. Or, uh, you know, I think there's really some misunderstanding about um, all this uh, anxiety we have about the way the gift cards were distributed. And the people that have questions about it aren't against charity, and they aren't against helping people. Really, the people that are concerned about what happened are the ones that want to make sure that it was done in the best way to help the people that really needed help the most. So we shouldn't be looked at as people that are against charity. We want it done correctly. Now, um, the first set of gift cards, that was what? Uh, was that money that was raised by the 10th Avenue Freeze Out? Is that where the, the money came from for those? The, uh, well, there was one, it was like $73,000 worth of gift cards of Kleins and uh, the sushi. And plus, you know, other folks just gave us gift cards. A few. I'll be honest with you, I remember walking down the street and people would just give them gift cards. Okay, so. People I knew and didn't know. And I would just give them in and give them to Kelly and just put them in this Right, but most of those gift cards were not donated as gift cards, they were donated as money, and then the borough went out and bought these gift cards, yeah. is that right? <coughs> no, okay. So those different businesses, like Klein's, he donated those gift cards. No, no. Uh, a very awesome guy named Joe Davidson, no. years ago, uh, put together a fundraiser on his own. Right. Uh, raised somewhere south of $100,000. Right. Um, uh, went out and purchased from Belmar and Lake Como businesses only uh, gift cards on his own. So he bought them. He bought them. Uh, and then he gave them to Kelly to distribute. And at the same time, he gave a check for $20,000 to uh, St. Rose uh, to help them with Well, that's great, you know, and that's, uh, that's what we should be doing. But, you know, the thing is, is that, um, you know, there are organizations, there are organizations that are very good at this kind of stuff. There's St. Vincent de Paul, Salvation Army, the Belmar Women's Club, right? And uh, you know, uh, you're aware of the uh, alert that was uh, received on uh, November 5th from the Department of Community Affairs, and uh, strong was a strongly worded alert, um, strongly urging towns not to get involved in the distribution of charity themselves, but when people call and they want to help, to tell them to, you know, to, to use their gener generosity with a, a you know, a, a properly vetted charity. What do you think the reason is? that the state didn't want municipalities handing out money themselves? Um, I, I can't answer for the state. I will tell you in that same memo, they did lay out uh, the guidelines so that towns could do it. Uh, and we adhere to those guidelines. And I'll tell you, I believe we distributed those gift cards and we're distributing grant money as well, if not better, yeah. than any other charity out there. Yeah, but there's an inherent, well, no, hold on, hold on. Hold on, there is an inherent conflict in that because you're giving money to voters and you know, this is the problem. St. Vincent, what? Are you saying that St. Vincent de Paul Society is not capable of doing that? That you know better than them how to do it? There is an inherent conflict in um, the elected officials handing out money to constituents, to voters. This is what people are concerned about. Now, you, Mr. Bean. If you were the mayor, then that was the decision you could have made. Well, I certainly would have. Right, and I'm the mayor, and that's the decision I made. Okay, I think it was a bad decision. Thank you. Um, well, and now, you know, you have an Open Public Records Act, right? Um, yes. Now, first, uh, let me ask, do you think if you've been hurt, like in a storm or something like that, that accepting charity is something to be ashamed of? Do I think that? Yeah, like you, you, I'm just asking you, is that a shameful act to accept an act of charity if you've you know, been hurt in a storm or hurt by some natural disaster or something like that. No. Certainly not, right? Right. Certainly well, not. Well, I'm, you're asking me. I'm speaking for Matthew Doherty. So okay. I wouldn't have shame that. Okay. Now, the Open Public Records Act, if that is not to be used for the case of finding out who the government is giving money to, what is the point of the Open Public Records Act? So it's not. For instance, people get um, welfare. That's not open public record. I think it, it probably is if someone, no. um, you know, no, filed a request. No, it's not. No. But absolutely not. It's not over. I mean, I'll tell you, you know, I, I looked at that, and it said you're not allowed to release the credit card numbers, social security numbers. Sorry, David. Yeah. That's your fine. Can I just respond to Mr. Yes. Schneck for sure. one second? Uh, 
Um, with the idea of privacy, thankfully nobody in my family needed any kind of charity. But if we did, we would not want it made public. We would not want that, we're very private people, we're people of integrity, we're people that would not want that information. Yes, it's charity, yes, we'd like to accept it. What, what's with the rolling of the eyes? I'm not oh. finished, Mr. Schneck. Somebody scolded the council for doing that. So I'm, I'm I, I just started to talk and I didn't realize you were done talking. No, sorry, so you don't need to roll your eyes, thank you. Um, so there are people who have privacy issues. It's not shameful to take charity, absolutely not. I agree. But everybody's different. Mr. Mr. Mayor said he wouldn't have a problem with it. I would. My family would. My mother, rest her soul, would. So I think that argument is not okay. on the table. Claire, there is an inherent conflict of interest in this, and that is why the state strongly recommended that towns don't get in the business of handing out money. The Belmar Women's Club does a fantastic job the Salvation Army, um, Catholic Charities, St. Vincent de Paul, there's all kinds of organizations that could have handled this where there wouldn't have been this conflict. Do you think Mr. Bean would have fired a over, over, filed an Oprah request if you would against um, or finding information about St. Vincent de Paul or even the Belmar Women's Club? Do you think he would have? I don't think. Certainly not. No, it wouldn't be. Okay, thank you. Yes, William. Bill McKim, 905 Ocean Avenue. I just want to respond as a resident of the town and somebody who was definitely affected by a lot of the things that happened in the last few months about the Monday morning quarterbacking that I hear at each one of these meetings. I look at the sand and the whole issue up at the beachfront as the way we all look at some people pay the kids to take the snow off the driveway and some people have a contractor to take the snow off the driveway. And somebody spends $30 and somebody spends 200 and they both get their driveway done and get it done at different times. I'm very happy that we had professionals do it and to compare us to Manasquan isn't really apples to apples because the Manasquan residents were told to get the sand to the street and to put it over a 10 foot barrier of the town sand to get it on the east side of the town's barrier of sand. That's all in, for anybody who wants to read it, you can go read it in the Belmar patch. So I just think you can't compare one to the other and it's kind of like having a a halfway driveway shovel and then something that's done by guys who do it professionally for a living. And also when you think about it, because I've watched it because they live right there, it's going to take, if they really have as much sand as Belmar has, then they better have the same equipment Belmar had because they are going to take two months plus to really, if they're going to sip the sand the way Belmar actually did.